What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today, like my man Steve Harvey Dunn say. It is Whitney Cummings. Crazy, chaotic, wonderful, uh, abrupt, honest, uh, confusing, and um, someone I love very much. Whitney is the best. Uh, we had a really good time. She's all over the place, and I'm no longer all over the place. This is my last weekend on the road before I take a long break and shoot the third season of Dave, which I'm excited about. Um, this weekend, right now, this very day, at this very moment, I am in Montclair, New Jersey. Tonight, Montclair, let's go. Tomorrow, I'm in Niagara Falls. Two shows in Niagara Falls, andrewsantino.com. The last three shows I'm doing tonight in Montclair, New Jersey. Two shows tomorrow night in Niagara Falls. andrewsantino.com, last place, last time to see me until I say good night. Uh, go get those tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again I'm today. I'm sorry you guys just had to hear his long-ass intro where he was thanking you for being fans. I it mean, is... if you want to thank your fans, stop wasting their time by thanking them insincerely in your opens. Whitney Cummings. <laughs> I mean, when does it end? I'm just saying, like, you thank them every time. I feel like the best way to show your gratitude is to stop and just know that it's implied. Oh, who's more gracious with their fans, you or me? Do you really want to go over this? I'm way more gracious. I see when you pander and you sign stuff after the show on stage, but you don't let them any closer. You're like, keep these animals below me. I'll sign stuff from the stage. I'll take a picture with your signed tits, but I'm never going to get that close to you. No, me? Well, I don't charge. I go out. You do I take them out to dinner. I take them out to dinner. Well, that's because you're a raging alcoholic with Thank a struggling you. marriage. Speaking of which, push mills. <laughs> Bushmills, <laughs> come grab some Bushmills Prohibition recipe. <laughs> I actually want to you now. Now you're gonna make me want to have a. I'm gonna have a little sip of this. What? You want to have some? I Just, am gonna. Do you mind if I have my June shine? My um, I can have a little bit maybe. You can have as much as I tell you to have. I'm gonna do the Bushmills Prohibition recipe. You know this is um. You know who gave me this for real? Uh, this is from um. Uh, uh, Peaky Blinders. They did a special edition. Do you like that show? I love that show. And My boyfriend has the me. Peaky Blinders haircut, and it's a real bummer. Your boyfriend who is dying of COVID, and you came to my studio regardless. Yeah, he's. It's a actual miracle that he's sick, and I haven't fallen out of love with him. You sent me a photo though. I got to tell you, this photo. Can I show the audience this photo? Sure. I'll put put up the photo right here. It's him in bed with the dog. And first of all, sucker for dogs and sucker for cute guys who are sick. That's, those are my two weaknesses. So he's curled up. Cute, oh my God. Cute guys that are sick. It's so cute. Whenever one of my friends sick, I always go visit him and I'm like, you want me to bring you something? Because I feel so bad because sick, sick women uh -huh. are just like, I'm sick. Go away. Leave me alone. And they're mad. Sick boys are okay. always like, I need help. Say men, maybe? Men? No, it's boys. Okay. Your boyfriend. It's not your do man. You, run you around, your man do you like run around St. Jude and just like jerk <laughs> off in the hallway? Jesus. Sick boys. Remember uh, Jimmy Savile? Did you watch that documentary about a guy named Jimmy Savile? He was like the. Oh, the UK. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. He was like, uh, this documentary Yuck. did not need to be made. It was like, oh. for like, it was, sorry for like a weird double entendre. It was masturbatory. It was sort of like, n n there was no like survivors talking or anything, I guess, because they were all dead, but he would work at children's hospitals yep. and molest kids that were like paraplegic. He was a famous television host yes. and he was like- Like a kid's show. It was like a giant kid's show. He was like their feel good guy. He was like their Al Roker or something. He's like Bozo the Clown. You remember Bozo the Clown? Yeah, I do. But I think that always, clowns right, always a... have a sinister undertone. He was like, the, they're Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Rogers turned out to be a really legit guy. I thought when they put out that documentary, we were going to see some dark shit about him. Nope. No, nope. but it a little annoyed me because I was like, "Nah, he did something bad." Don't you think? Can we find out something men bad about when him? wearing sweaters? You can never come back from it. I don't think V-neck sweaters. <laughs> it's like it just feels sketchy. But uh, I do think that it was odd that the Mister Rogers movie with um, Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks came out and no one really, it didn't really, that should have been, that it was when I was like, oh, the movie business is over. When Tom Hanks did a biopic playing a beloved person, yeah. transformed into him, is putting caulk and grout on his face every day to look like him and putting on cardigans and shit. And it kind of just didn't, nothing really. Yeah, but I bet I can tell you why. Why? What was the name of the movie? Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers. 
What was Mr. it called? Like, won't you be my neighbor? I or something? don't know. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Roger no? that. I don't Roger know. Roger that. We got two for two. <laughs> I don't know what it was called. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Tom See, that- Hanks Oscar juggernaut. What other movies premiered on the day that A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood premiered? Yeah, but movies like that are sleepers. They're not like, they don't need to be a big box office. Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood premiered on, let's see, release date, September 7th, 2019. Uh-huh. I guess this is pre-COVID. Yeah, it, there's like the Labor Day, or after Labor Day weekend. I mean, it's it should have been like a big Christmas, Thanksgiving heart warmer with September the family. September 7th? So, That's the Oscar, surefire Oscar movies come out. What movies premiered on September 7th, 2019? I'm so sorry. Maybe go back to thanking your fans. I want to thank my fans right now. Okay, <laughs> what movies premiered on September 7th? I just and, mean it should have, don't you think? No competition, and I'm not kidding. Stolen Princess, Doom, the video game that turned into a film, Scooby-Doo. Well, when video games come out, that is actually does legitimately pull from movies. No, but it, but it's that was just for the kid. Like, there's no oh. other competitive. Yeah. Diego Maradona. I guess it's weird to think like, okay, it's not really a date movie. It's not really a, I'm gonna fuck this girl movie. It's it, it's. I feel like it's a. I'm at Thanksgiving with my family. We're gonna watch the Mr. Rogers movie. Maybe we figured it out it's better as a documentary. Or maybe the or maybe we're just making too much of everything. Maybe a documentary coming out and a movie coming out. I'm gonna pick one. Anna Delvey go, documentary and show. I can't really do both. Yep. Yeah, do you think that could be it? <laughs> Your paw, the way she did it. I am interviewing Anna Delvey in prison in New York. Fuck you. Swear to God. When? Uh, in like three weeks. Can I go? Sure. She, by the way, they asked for me to bring makeup for her. Wait, what? So excited. Wait, <laughs> she's still in prison? She's still in prison. I'm going, they approved me to go to prison. What's she in prison for? Uh, uh, extortion, I think. I don't know, I really that should really research gets it. really you? No, I'm on her side. She sounds cool. Yeah, what she did she like really a good do business besides person. dupe people into giving her stuff? I'm not sure exactly, but I did decide today that this is my first time I'm going to do a podcast and have a, a, a goal. <laughs> What's your goal? <laughs> well, What's I want to ask you a couple questions. Oh, okay. And I also want to talk about burgeoning bits. Burgeoning bits. I've decided that I do not shine in meandering conversations. Okay. Well, let's sit in something then. Because I don't like, I, here's what I don't do well with on podcasts, listening or participating, is when two people that know nothing about a subject try to talk about it mm-hmm. and just ask rhetorical questions. All right, let's talk about something. What, is, what is she in jail for? We don't know any, like, and we're like, but let's we get just to look make it, it up. up. We get to make it up. But, but the people listening probably do know the answer and they're just listening to idiots not know. That's exactly what they want on this show. Hold on, but you know when you listen to a podcast and someone's like, "What was the name? What's the Biden's VP? What's her? What's her name?" And everyone's like, "What's the?" And you're listening and you're like, G-, "Like it's like a horrible, uh, like a watching Jeopardy where you're like screaming out the answer." I've never listened to a podcast before in my see. Life. I actually started listening to podcasts a couple months ago, and I realized that we need to pull it together. <laughs> <laughs> we are. That's the problem. We're fucking slobs. Well, see, dude. if you don't listen, that you don't know ignorance is bliss. Happy there, Pride Month. How about that? There this is, is a subject you a, I know have no about. pride. Everyone knows that about me. Here's the <laughs> thing, though. I I do believe that we uh, we this is gonna run out. This whole we just get to like hang out, yeah. and have people throw money at us. Mm-hmm. I feel like those days are gonna be a post COVID with people having enough. Like I feel like we're now competing with fucking Ozark and Squid Games, and we might have to know the answer to some of the questions we ask. Okay, well let, let's give some factual stuff. What's a fact that you know that we can discuss? We're running out of sand. The world is running out of sand. Fuck off. I swear to God. The ocean is eroding the sand to that degree that it, it's no, going to go just away? No, they're just so many buildings have been built with it that we're running out of the sand. That's how dumb I am. I didn't know. Yeah, because sand is made from water going over, like, rocks, I think. And uh, I know. I read about it the other day. But wait, we're using too much sand to build buildings. Yeah, we're running out of sand. And in India, there's this black market for sand, and they'll, like, take these basically indentured slaves out into a boat to dive down Right, get sand. get sand from the bottom of the ocean, bring it back with up. With their two hands? Yes, with their two, well, with like the little machine thing. A little machine. And then they just go off with the boat and leave the guys to die. Whoa. I know. So there's a bunch of dead slaves in the ocean. Mm-hmm, but we have our sand. Indian Ocean? It's, well, China is obviously building lots of buildings. Woo! And they're using, all, I, I don't think I knew, I knew that glass was made of sand, but I also kind of didn't think we needed sand to make glass. I thought maybe there was like a new way to do it. Yeah, like at this point, I, like I, I just had a protein shake with plant protein, but I don't know if it was real or fake or just made up. Sure. I, I feel like we can just make everything at this point. The fact that Robert Plant doesn't make protein powder drives me insane. Any things you want, any businesses you want to get into just from, you are someone who is so 
uh, and this is something is that is your genius. Easily angered. Yeah, I'm like that too. Irascible yeah. people. We see problems where other people don't see problems, and we get impatient. And as a result, I think we are uniquely qualified to come up with inventions. I got one. You're the bitch that's on a set going. If there was just a machine, you like, but you won't follow through with it. No, but it's just because I've got other stuff going on. What are yours? I think on an airplane, we need a community organizer. There sure. needs to be one person on a plane Love it. who gets to tell everybody the real shit. Because of like a, the RA. Yes, we need an RA. We need a Behavior fucking RA. Behavior RA. Yes. Behavior. Sir, cut that the fuck out. Hey, no, we're not FaceTiming on the plane. Nope, cut it out. You're talking too... Hey, Love it. ma'am, you're talking too loud. Obviously, no one wants to hear your fucking bullshit. Yeah, no porn in 24B, sir. <laughs> There was a guy sitting across from wow. me, and this man took off of his fucking shoes and put it on the bulkhead, yep. and was shoving taro root chips in his mouth, and they were spilling everywhere, mm -hmm. and he should get a ticket. There I should be went an to St. Louis recently, you. sat in uh, first class, I have lots of points, Miles, uh, and woman You're, pulls- Is that your first time in first class? First time in first class, I get to have a cookie. <laughs> This woman pulls out a bag of five hard-boiled eggs. Uh, no. Pulls them out, nope. starts peeling. I literally went, ma'am, ma'am. I was like, uh-uh, mm -mm. ma'am. Like, I'm that bitch. I'm, uh, my shoelace comes off, and I, I would, I'm choking myself I out on that plane. I would volunteer to be that person. So we need an RA on yep, a fucking agreed. plane. Behavior a beha control. A behavioral controllist yep. that gets on there, because I've said this before. I've said this on this on the show. When the, do when the ding, ding, and you're allowed to get up and get your fucking bags, mm -hmm. If you start to meander through the aisle, okay, because you think you're going to jump up the plane to get off early, sure. you better fucking believe I'm putting my arm out and I'm stopping you. And I've done it every flight I've been on. <laughs> I will physically stop yeah, people yeah. And, I'll go, and I will say, I'll look, a, I'll look across the aisle and I'll go, why don't you let these people get out first? Because sure. they're just as important as you are. And they get embarrassed and everyone just kind of looks at me and goes, right on. Yeah, mm -hmm. fuck that guy. So we need a behavioral RA to and go And the behavioral sit RA, I'm not trying to be racist, but it can only be a black woman. A black woman or a black man? Why can't we have a black guy? I just... You don't like black guys. No. You heard it here first. <laughs> Whitney Cummings doesn't like black guys. I just... Whenever I see, am having an issue with someone's behavior and I there's a uh, a black stewardess. Are we allowed to say that? Are we it's allowed to say stewardess? Flight attendant. Flight attendant? Yeah. Uh, what do we call them? Future CEOs? Future CEOs. So what do we call them? <laughs> Equals, if not superiors? Or probably Sorry. superiors. Stewardess. 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 Um, she's on... And I'm a comedian, so we're making contact <laughs> and like someone's doing something that's like borderline and I'll see and she'll be like and I'm like yep you see it let her have yeah. it yeah a lot of white women will be like yeah that's okay that's appropriate well white women you know you, you know what I'm saying it has to be a black woman I can't wait till they find out that you guys are worse than us that white women are worse than white men have I you cannot wait. read the news in the I, last couple weeks I am weeks. so excited for it to <laughs> spread like wildfire over, that these dude. evil evil women mm -hmm. stop throwing rocks they're coming for you guys so also uh, like for example a rain machine on TV and movie sets that has an in between rain machines Holy shit. only it's always, torrential it's always a fucking st it's a it's a storm it's a tsunami, tsunami. storm Watch any couple in a movie fighting in the rain. The actors are like, <laughs> the actors, but the actors are like, like watch it a few good men. It's like Demi Moore and uh, uh, Tom Cruise. Like they literally. It's it, pouring. It's pouring rain. Or it's spittle. Or it's like. Or to, it's nothing. Yeah. They have to do it. There's no in between because of the way rain machines are, they're, by the time it falls, it's going to be torrential regardless. Like there's no way. This is really smart. They do need. This is a Neil Brennan invention. Oh, you, oh we got to uh, give no, you this credit. No, this one's Neil Brennan. This oh. next one. A green screen overlay in post that adds extras. A green screen overlay. So you don't need extras. You don't need them while you're shooting it. Oh, right. Okay, that's because you don't like background actors. I don't. And I call them background actors because I respect them as people. <laughs> Whitney, on the other hand, calls them scum, I call, accoutrement. No, I... She goes, look at all these tchotchkes here on set. <laughs> you know, those are people, Whitney. Subhuman. <laughs> um, no, I just mean it's more that like you can never quite have enough and... Uh, Neil always said, there's no such thing as enough extras. There's never enough. It oh, always correct. looks awkward and empty. You're right. And as an actor, like you're walking through and they're trying to spread the extras out, but you need to like move through the crowd, but everyone's five feet free. You just look like an actor. Oh, extras is- I couldn't agree with this more because- But I'm you pay the extras to do the overlay, so you're not eliminating a job. It's like loopers, but they're- Yes, you yes. go, we fill this in later, we fill some in here, here. I, like, I actually really like this idea, also because they fucking bully extras to sitting around for- Yep way too long, yeah. and they're like, they don't need these guys to sit here for no fucking and reason. And no one talks to the extras. It's not their fault. And they always end up looking straight into the fucking camera because no one's telling them yeah. what to do. Nobody says where we're starting from. And then they do the wrong thing. And then the fucking AD is like, come on, man. 
How and that could guy more? Know. You realize on every movie set. I mean, this was like my deal with the Britney Spears thing. When you're like, okay, for this to happen for eight, ten years or whatever it was, there's so many people that were involved that signed NDAs. Which is why I did a thing on my podcast where I said, if you signed an NDA and you work there, you're like the the, uh, the cleaning lady or the person that cuts up her pills and jams them down her throat or whatever. If you work on that premises and you signed an NDA and the only reason you're not telling people what actually was going on inside is because you're worried about being sued for the NDA, mm-hmm. I will pay your NDA violation fee. How much does that cost? It's though, not. It's never. what he, the, hundred grand? The contract that he, Jamie Spears made, there's no way it's even valid. Who's Jamie? Jamie Spears is Britney Spears' dad. S- Oh, okay. Worst case scenario. So here's the What's thing. What's her sister's name? I thought that was Jamie. I Spears. think it's also Jamie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There, there aren't that. a lot of female names out there. They had to really. <laughs> I mean, what what did they have to pick from? It was it was like a, there was a gun to their head when they were like, name her. And what options? Like, uh, are, Jamie. It, it was Jamie or Kaylee. Like, That's what it. options do they have down there? <laughs> and uh, and so if 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 uh, if I work for you, if I'm your assistant, uh-huh. and I sign an NDA. That is basically like if I share any of your information or like you doing something sketchy, I have to then you can sue me, right? Yeah. Because I signed the NDA. But number one, if you sue me, you're basically just looking guilty. Yeah, because obviously it's like, why are you suing me? Yeah, exactly. What did I have? So you've already lost. You already have all the leverage in the world. Right. But he basically just made these like scary looking con. Every NDA is a joke if you're, you know what I mean? Because if someone sues you, you actually have more leverage than you think. The only time I've ever signed one of those is for a. You can't show anybody this script, and it's like, what the fuck? Who's gonna yeah, read yeah, this script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine someone getting a hold of it yeah. and like doing anything? Unless like it's... Hot Tub Time Machine Three. <laughs> Is this really the protocol? But <laughs> okay. it's Joan Cusack, yeah, not John. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Oh, okay. I get it. it. Yeah, no, let's this keep that flip. hush hush. This is a flip. I get it. <laughs> I've only signed it for those things, but it's always so kind of condescending. Like, um, like I'm a little like, um, here's a script, but like, don't tell anybody, you fucking loser. It's yeah. that kind of thing where you're like. Why is, is this the that The only important? reason to do it is that when you have like novice people working with you, who yeah. we, we all want to hire, just so they know like, hey, you can't tell people where I live. Okay, you have an assistant. She, yeah, but, and they all sign. Does she have to sign it? They do. It just goes with my lawyer, which is basically like, hey, this isn't about like her behavior or whatever, like it's, or secrets. It's more about like where my mom's nursing home is. Like mm-hmm. you can't just be out at a bar and be like, Whitney lives at four and nine where she lives and her nursing, like, you know what I'm saying? This is Whitney's address right here. I'm going to put her address up right here, and her phone number is right below it. <laughs> please. So please show up, and she does love guests. You guys, one I thing have she loves. four pit bulls, and they love They love strangers. People that show up. And here's the best thing. Jump over the fence. Don't come through the front. Come through the back also, of the side. Also, actually, come on in. Come into my kitchen. Wash your hands. You'll go blind. <laughs> I went to this fucking Dude, bitch's house. Can I just say something? No, let me this tell the, the story. This is the hardest I've laughed in a long time. I went to this idiot's house. <laughs> Tim Dillon's back in town. This is we this all got is, COVID that night, by the way. Yeah, we did. This is September, like before, so pre-vax, like oh, yeah. in the heart of it. September two thousand, when it could kill anybody. When it did kill everybody. <laughs> you showed up with this Stefano. I, I to Stefano and and his friend who gave it to me. No, this literally shows up and go. This guy owns the Atlanta. His dad. Fucking funny buckle. There it is. And like, yeah, you have COVID. No, that's first of all, <laughs> that's to Stefano's very good old friend. Yes, no, I and I love and that. So I idea. brought them over, and then I said to Wit, "Oh, I want to wash my hands." We were all hanging out outside, <laughs> bitch. And this fucking bitch. I did nothing wrong, so I- No, no, but it feels like it's your fault for some it reason. Is my, you know why it's my fault? Because I am a dumbass. I have so many health problems in my family that I went through this moment where I was like, I'm doing all organic stuff, organic can wash, organic house cleaner. And who's the, what's the brand that got- Dr. Bronner, Let me tell you about Dr. fucking Bronner, and sue I'm gonna him. sue you. Anytime I've ever pumped soap, my entire life, <laughs> It just comes right out. Yep. But Dr. fucking Bronner's had coagulated yep, on yep, the yep, tip. Yep, 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 yep. Because so it was all natural. Because when I pump it, and I'm looking this way at Whitney's Whitney's friend who's talking to me, I look right at Whitney's friend. I go, uh-huh. I pump it. It ricochets off to the coagulation. And not even, I'm not fucking kidding. But you know what's great? Right in my <laughs> eyeball. Not near it. In my eyeball. By the way, I've, I've got that shit in my eyes before. It burns it, like, yeah. so fucking no, for much. for days. It hurt me for, no shit, I couldn't drive home. I was fucking like in her bathroom for an hour, washing out my fucking eye, and everyone's laughing at me. And I'm trying to do like, no, no, seriously though, it fucking, I, like it's really bad. But, when, but then afterwards we were like, this it can't be as bad. He must've rubbed it or something. And we pressed it and it just went, Woof. like it was like a fucking machine gun. Dude, it hit me so hard in the fucking eye. It literally made me fall backwards. Oh God. You so know thanks what? to Dr. Bronner. It did make me love you because maybe to your point about when you see people sick, like 
seeing you like in pain made oh, me- Oh, it hurt. It, I know, but it made me like love you so much because I only sort of know you as this, like our relationship is so like roasty and rough and there's like zero vulnerability in mm -hmm. our relationship. And to see you like genu genuinely like struggling, it, it, it made me it warmed your heart I, to see me it did it did it's like when kids I, like seeing an adult getting hit in the penis or something yeah yeah and kids are like yes that's the best version of this yeah and the dad has to laugh even though it really hurts you seeing me in pain you're like oh this well, is awesome no it's just like it was just like the chances of that happening were just uh, impossible so tiny like you could if you did that in a sitcom i'd be like that is the hackiest like what are the chances it yeah would who's go? writing that you're well, so tall also too. because i had to look this way for it to work if i looked straight <laughs> it probably would have missed i looked at your fucking friend and it hit me right in the eyeball this way it would have hit me up I'm here so, I, after that i no joke uh uh was like, I need to get ring cameras like all over the house. Just so you can record that. I had had that on camera. <laughs> I am like so bummed. That was my first thought. I was like, no one got that? I was so pissed. Why did Santino quit comedy? Whitney has this video of him getting soap in his oh, eyeball so and just looping funny. it, me looking like a, and I bitched for a long time. Oh no. What did you do? You Sorry. break my yeah, mic? I no, did. no, it's the bottom one. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I've spoken pretty openly about BetterHelp and how I believe in uh, therapy, whether it's traditional or online therapy. I'm a big fan of non-traditional therapy. I like online because I like to do it from the comfort of my own couch because I'm lazy sometimes uh, and I want to be comfortable. Sometimes I crawl up into bed and I do it from my comfy little bed. Uh, look, life is going to be overwhelming for all of us and it can feel heavy, heavier than most. And many people are burned out without even knowing symptoms of burning out our lack of motivation, irritability, fatigue, and much, much more. And, you know, you associate burnout with work, and that's not the only cause. Uh, any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burnt out. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Put yourself forward. Put yourself first. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even chat sessions. Live chat, that is, with your therapist. You don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Your choice it's much more affordable. That is true. It's a lot cheaper than in-person therapy. And uh, you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. That's extremely fast. Um, and I got to tell you, I'm a big proponent of, of, of mental health and trying to get help for what you need. Uh, and if you feel like you want to do it, this is, the best, this is a good way to start. Is uh, doing it from the comfort of your house or your office or your car or wherever makes you feel comfortable. So our listeners are going to get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Hey, when it's time to get freaky dicky with someone that you enjoy, you got to be ready. You got to be Roman ready. And that's why I'm here to tell you about Roman. Whether you've been in a relationship for a long time or you're just starting out a new fling-a-ding-a-ding. -a -ding. Uh, let me tell you something. A lot of times men are uh, scared to admit when they have a little bit of trouble even though you are far from ordinary. The truth is that ED is really common. A lot of guys have it, all right? 52% of guys age 40 and 70 have it. That's the majority of men between that category, okay? Not that big of a deal. It's so much more common than you think. The benefits of ED treatment can help you reconnect with your partner, rediscover that joy of SEX. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction. All the comfort and privacy of your own home. They got a U.S. licensed healthcare professional who's gonna tell you what you need. They're gonna give you an evaluation, give you ongoing care. And, you know, take away all that uncomfortable stuff about walking into an office. The whole process is straightforward, uh, convenient, and very discreet. And if uh, if that U.S. licensed healthcare professional finds out that it's right for you, they're going to ship it to your house for free with two-day shipping. Two days, it'll be there. All right, call them on a Tuesday, probably get it on a Thursday or a Friday. Getting started is so simple. Um, just go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. GetRoman.com slash whiskey. Today... And if you're prescribed, you're going to get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Roman ready. Ginger. I like gingers. Um, okay, so we did spend some time together during the pandemic. Do you feel like you, the right after the pandemic, we all kind of... Everybody went away. Everybody, well, we all had to do 500 tour dates. But are you done? Are you still going? I, I just shot a, my special. I still have a couple like makeup dates in September and... Uh, Your special is on Quibi. Is that where it's, the... it is on Quibi? Yes, it is on. And you can it's on. It's a CISO Quibi. Uh, so Paramount minus production. <laughs> Wait, are you doing another Netflix? Uh, you no. know, I, I paid for it myself, and I'm licensing it to Netflix. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. And people don't know, but yes, I am doing one. But we that is where, that but... is actually I actually have a qualm with you. <sighs> is that okay? 
Did yeah. you have a game plan for this show? Yeah, I know I did actually, but it's like you've sabotaged it like you do everything else in this. Does life. it not seem weird that we all just sit down and have casual conversations with no game plan? No, I I had questions I wanted to ask you. Oh, but, then go. Well, what you do is no, no, no. What's your qualm? Fucking tell me your. No, qualm. no I just listened to your episode with De Stefano, and I, as two of my favorite people, I'm listening to them talk. I don't know what this thing is where we like comedians have to admit that Netflix passed on them. Everyone passed. Everyone, like, why are we? Why are you telling anyone this? Everybody did pass on his special. To be but why, fair, why stop? Why are we talking about that? Why not? It just feels like a weird business. He move. wants these people to know, the listeners to know that. Because are you telling me that the people that listen to podcasts are not people that watch Netflix at all, or are I think they different I, people? I think some of them do, and some of them don't. I think some of the people here want to know that. The, like, I, what's the strategy for that? Just curious. Well, I didn't. It, uh, that's him saying this, by the way, not yeah. me. But I think the reason he wanted to tell people about that was because he painstakingly worked to, to deliver this good special that he shot as himself, that him and Homeless Pimp shot. Mm -hmm. He spent all this money and he was like, went out with a good product and is trying to tell the fans, this is kind of behind the scenes what's happening in the business right now. Yeah. I think that's an- I and, think But it's, it's happening an, to so many people. But that's why it's relieving for him to say it, for people to hear it, to go, ah, me too, you know? Like I was talking to Justin like the other day. Yeah, but the people that it's happening to aren't listening to these podcasts. No I know, offense. but they like to know. I, I I know. I'm just curious, like if it why he did it. Why I think it, he wanted to take a little shot at them a little bit. I think it was a little fuck you. But it would. But it was going to get on there regardless. It doesn't. I know. But it's a little fuck you. Andrew Schultz did the same thing. He said fuck yes. Netflix a thousand times. Well, then that he put was a show slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost like mm -hmm. wh 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 you know. But did you think about going to HBO because they are going out to people? You know this now. HBO. They're yeah. fishing hard. Yes, I do. Did you want to maybe? Well, I own it, so I can put it on there when I want to. After you're done with Netflix. Yes. It's interesting, and I just watched Bird just put five comics on his new. Um, well, I don't know what it's. I don't know what that. What is that? What would that be called? Like a variety special on Netflix? Yeah, because it's like uh, Ian yeah, Edwards. Yeah, yeah. There's one that yeah, Chappelle did one. Uh, Tiffany Haddish did one years ago. Yeah, I'd like to be invited on one of it's those. It's like his friends. I'd like to be invited on one of those. I don't think I want to do 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Yeah, but I want you to do it. I want oh, a friend to do it. Okay. So that I can also do it with them. I can do that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think it's a little weird to. Whitney Cummings presents. Yeah, but you're a headliner. It doesn't matter. So are so are some of those people. But you doing 15 minutes? Imagine doing 10 minutes. But let's do a different format. See, this I've always been saying this. Why aren't these specials or these variety things like? Maybe fifteen minutes of a of an interview podcast, agree, and, then, and then a stand up yes. chunk, and then something agree. else. That that is something I that will sidebar on. Uh, but also, I do think there's an argument to be made f to do two half hour specials a year. It's going back to premium blend. It's so weird how we keep inventing things that have happened before. I love like, premium blend so much. By the way, the other day I was um uh had to go out and like run some errands, and I was like, what if there was a place that had like a grocery store and like. Like a clothing store, but then also like like a store that has like like home goods and like I don't know like a hot dog stand. I was like, I just invented a mall. Like yeah. I just I'm inventing things that have already. Existed. I think you just you just named Target, by the way. Target has all of those things. Yeah, totally. But I just Food, was like, what? Clothes, I, wait, there's like a tires. courtyard, a fountain. I could meet my friend and her kid. You know what I mean? I was just like, oh, the Grove. But, when was the last time you went to a mall though? Um, You're not going to the oh, fucking don't you Grove. don't want to do this with me? Um, you don't go to the mall. I recently went to the mall to host an event for a friend who's an author. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I moderated a, a talk at Barnes and Noble. You haven't been to a mall to shop in many, many a movie. Um, my, I went to the Gap. Uh, my mom is in a nursing home, and I had to get her a bunch of things she could wear for Whitney. For you, I went to Target not recently a, a to get a prescription. Okay, doesn't count. I had a blast. Have you ever gotten stoned and just like gone around Target? First of all, most of the time when I go on long errand runs, I am stoned. See, I hadn't. What, am done I, that. what else am I doing out there? I hadn't done that. Go Dude. to the Apple Store high is very fun. Really? Yeah, sometimes I'll just sit and type emails on one of those open MacBooks. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can't deal with the fucking, I don't know, too many dorks. Um, oh, you're not a fan of dorks? No, I love dorks. You're right. No, you love fucking dorks. Yeah. It's like, I just don't like someone's like, did you try plugging it in? Yeah, I drove 40 miles. Have you ever seen? And I'll do that. I'll be like, I drove 40, and then he plugs it in. Have you ever seen a guy fucking, his name is Ross Creations online. That's his hmm. Instagram or whatever. This dude is so fucking funny. In the world of prank shows or whatever. Oh, yeah. He's not a, he is, he's more like what Nathan did. Yeah. Are you spilling on yourself again? I did. Good, more Pepsi for me. <laughs> I'm a Pepsi bitch. 150 calories? That's more, than, okay. Oh, that's just half the can. Never mind. Wait, listen to this guy. Ross Creations did one of the funniest computer bits I've ever seen. He called a computer technician to come over. And of course, the first thing out of his mouth was, well, have you unplugged it and plugged it back in? <laughs> and he's like, 
Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, I definitely have. I definitely have. He's like, I'm gonna leave you to it. And he has <laughs> he has a hidden camera. And he goes, I'm gonna leave you to it. And I'm gonna go out back and finish something. And the guy opens up the. It's an old PC with a base, mm-hmm. you know. With a, and he opens up the base, and there it's filled, and he's filled it with baked beans. And I mean. <laughs> It is so fucking funny. That's insane. The guy's face and the way he plays off. And this guy, Ross, is such a good actor. And when he goes, he's like, there's baked beans in here. And he goes, oh, are those, are those, well, I mean, how do you get those out? Are those like, is that, and he's like, is that from the, is that something from the software? And he's like, no, this is not supposed to be in here. And he's like, really? And like the way he fucks with this guy was so clever. And it was one of the first times I've seen somebody do a hidden camera bit, quote unquote, where it was like the pies on all of our face. Mm, well, you hadn't watched I worked, my punk. Well, you were terrible on it. I was on it, <laughs> and you were so bad. But punk was always like, "Look what you did," and then our seasons were like, "Look what we did." But for the first time, I saw a prank where like both people kind of looked fun and stupid. That's great. Where he looked like stupid on purpose. That's funny. They were like, bo- there was it, they were both in the same vibration. But it was of course he was acting. He knew, but it was like, man, he did such a good job of like being in bed with this guy emotionally of being like. This is scary. Is and, this scary? And how do those end? Like, do they? No, he ever like anything on the internet now. It's over. It's gone. And then did they you just have, stop and, it. So do you have to get because the internet is starting to be real, a real money making machine. So he I have a friend. His face. Oh, got it. Because he otherwise, he yeah, he would have to get it signed. I have a friend who posted a photo that was taken by her from a paparazzi guy. She put it on her Instagram. And he said, "You have to pay me for that photo because I own it." And then she took it down. And now he's trying to like sue her. For it. What? Because if you could do a red carpet for Dave for any of your shows, I don't yeah. know if they invite you, but. Um, if- <laughs> Fucking bitch. But, I do get an invite. Okay. I, I usually decline. And, and, yeah, okay. And so uh, you go on the red carpet, they take pictures of you. It used yeah. to be we could just like go online, screen grab, and put it on our and Instagram. I still do that. Yeah, I know you can't do that anymore. Wait, why? Yeah, because they own, you have to buy the photo now. What if I, what, what if when I screen grab it, I still leave can't- up. I still leave up the watermark. <laughs> no, I don't like think, when it says Getty no, Images, I just leave it on there. I'm like, hey, I gave you credit. They might not, but but like they are going after people now. Damn, is Steve Getty out there fucking suing yeah, people? Yeah, wire image like they're coming for you. You have to buy it now because they like how else are photographers making money anymore? I mean, there was a fucking the billboard campaign of taken with an iPhone. Imagine being a professional <laughs> photographer <laughs> and seeing that. I mean, just gun in your mouth. Imagine. No, like I spent thirty years perfecting a camera, and, and Apple is just like, nah, dude. Any fucking idiot can just. Snap a thing and it's just. As it's good. like of a polar bear in the taken with an iPhone. But it does look amazing. By yeah, the like way. what is there to? I mean, imagine being. Is there any more irrelevant job? So our camera than photographer. Our, 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 our photographer's bullshit. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm. Not, I'm. That's not. No, there's. I mean, Dave LaChapelle. There's certain. I, Troy Conrad's can do shit you and I can't do. I know, but is it the camera or is it the photographer? When it's Troy or when it's David LaChapelle, you're kind of like, I don't know, you and I can't get five oh, suits, Emily Rajakowski to come here and let us take a picture of her. Can't we though? Emily, come on in. <laughs> I don't think she- I think, she, no, I agree with you saying- There's certain people that have access that we don't have. Yeah, you're right. And their ability and skill is like seeing the thing. That's yeah. what I'm- but that's here's what, what I'll I'm say: the at. Sable Island horses, right? The ones that you've seen the photos of. Um, oh, of course, I don't. I'm forgetting the guy's name, which is so shitty of me because I have two giant uh, uh, photographs of his in my house. Um, and a horse photo the in your Sable, living room? I, no, no, I those no, they're upstairs now. I have a horse room now. Oh, okay. It's just horses. It's just mine. <laughs> and so um, I, I know why is this ring still empty? Why is the ring finger not? You know why? Why? Because any guy that really likes you, yeah, knows to not marry you. Oh, cute. You're not. De- so the guy that proposed to me didn't really like me? Didn't really like me. <laughs> I talked to him. He was like, I loved her. I you didn't really like her. You two would get along, actually. But, Your ex? But yeah, Sable Island horses. Um, they're the ones that you see them and they have the really long hair. They're in a, a an island in uh, northern Canada that uh-huh. is Sable Island. No one is allowed on it. It's okay. preserved. It's the last wild horses left. Love. You know, they have big dreadlock hair. I've seen it. In this like black and white and they're running in the ocean and shit. Yes. So there's only one photographer that's able to go get those photos. But if I was allowed on, which I'm working on, um, I'm sure I could take photos that look like that if you gave me enough time and a couple carrots. I don't think so. Okay. I think you would take photos that look like a person with no I mean, background. It'd be all me selfies with, with to horses get the in the horses background. <laughs> What's up? I'm with the fucking horses. Hey guys. So, uh, guys, get in the video. Come here. <laughs> We're on live. You can check out the fucking horses. But are they vulnerable? Will they kill you? Will they hurt you? Um, not if you're smart. But yes, they're uh, wild horses are very violent. So I saw wild horses in um, not Mammoth. Why can't I? The other one. What's wrong Big with Bear? you? 
No, what's up north? What's wrong with me? Um, no, Mammoth is up north. More, yeah, Mammoth I don't is do, the one that's up I, there. I don't do ski Big Bear's things. out there. Mammoth is up there. Sure. Mammoth has what? There was wild horses that we went off into the distance and uh-huh. went and saw wild horses. I can show you photos of it. A, a woman at a bar, I'm not kidding, was uh-huh. like, you guys ever been to the wild ho- where the wild horses are? And we were like, no. And she's like, all you have to do is go this, 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 this. She laid out all these directions. I wrote it down on a fucking bar napkin. And I thought, this bitch is p- fucking with us. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. Yeah. We're going to try it. I've got an hour to kill. Sure enough, we go all the way the fuck out. I've got a wife to kill. <laughs> Let uh, me go to a remote place. T- time. To, I've got to look time to kill. Dead horses I've got time to kill. <laughs> and then we go out there, sure enough, and there's fucking, there's like six or seven wild, just wild horses. And the one thing that she did say was, don't get out of your car. They will fucking charge you. Yeah. And if they get you, they'll stomp you to death. They bite. But I kind of want to get them. stomped to death. Mm, I've had a, I had a dent in the side of my leg from being uh, kicked by a horse for the longest time. I recently got it fixed. You know what's really cute is that my guy, who does love me and does want to marry me, why can't you say boyfriend? Because I'm I I, I partner. It, there's certain things that I think that as you get older, yeah. aren't as cute on you. Okay, partner. For example, I think men over fifty shouldn't wear like logos. What kind of logo? What do you like mean? Like a, a Under Armour. Like, oh yeah, just a white shirt, black shirt. But if he's shirt. going to the gym, yeah, that's fine. But you know what I mean, like Tevas. Like, there's just certain things as you get older. I'm learning. There's certain things that I've been, after I shot my special. Whenever I shoot a special, it's like I think what most people do when they go through a breakup. I like cut my hair. I like change everything about myself because mm-hmm. I felt so stuck to that person. Yeah. And I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but I do find sometimes when you're like trying to shoot a special, like you're ready and you're not growing as a person to stay aligned with the material in your special. And you want, you need to get rid of it to shift. Like I do, yeah. exactly. Like I can't really grow as a person because right now I'm doing this thing and I've got the blue hair and the cowboy boots the and like blue or hair. whatever. The- <laughs> yes. And so um, I just shot my special and then it was like I got rid of all my jean shorts. I got rid of all my like <laughs> studded sneakers. Why? Like who the fuck was that? I had all these like black studded sneakers. I got rid of my like. Like muscle shirts with safety pins in them. Like so I'm who Justin are you now? Thoreau. Well, no, I just was like, I believe as a woman now it's time for you know it. Okay, it's that's time. You said woman. I, I, that's I'm, a, that's I'm not a bad gonna, word. And this is also it's the down below one. I got it. It's down a, below. No, I can just do it like this. Oh, I'll just put it between my tits like a nightmare. So I today is the worst day to be having this conversation with you because of the way I'm dressing, but I'm I'm not gonna do hoodies on stage anymore. I'm not gonna, like, I, there's certain things I wanna, like, well, what do you wanna be like now? Upgrade. No, I just wanna, like, mature a little. What That's is that? All. It's that one right down, there it is. Yes. Good girl. But don't you feel like during the pandemic, we all regressed a little bit emotionally, and it was, was like one big sleepover party? Now it's no. like, back to work, guys. No? Do you want me to fix this for you? It's gotten to the point now where it's comp- I know, Lift it up, and then, and then turn the thing. I feel like I know what you're saying, but I also feel like you, you, you go through these, like, you know how like an, <laughs> oh God, you know how tropical places have microclimates? Do you know no. what that means? No. Do you not understand? Like there's little okay. rainstorms. <laughs> like on, on an island of Hawaii, which I just got back from okay. 12 hours ago. You've been there a lot lately. A lot, yeah. Uh, do you not have a passport? There's a guy. There's a guy that I love. That's there. Do you not have a passport? Yes, of course I have a fucking passport. Why do you keep going there? Why don't you go learn something? There were opportunities to go there for business. Pipeline Cafe. Still doing comedy cafes? <laughs> no, I didn't perform. <laughs> I went and played golf for kids who were sick. Little boys who are sick in particular. Oh, no, we, we've Shout out to my little them. boy, my little sick boys. He's not a pedophile because they have to be sick. It's, it's little different. sick boys. And- <laughs> All right. So, so uh, <laughs> what I learned was on the western part of the island where we were, never rains. East side never stops fucking raining. I love that. Yeah, microclimates because of tropical places like that that are close to the equator. Sure. There are microclimates all over. One place it's 84. Sure. The other place was 62. Sure, sure, sure. Whitney Cummings is a tropical island. So maybe this is why I'm not Let me finish. feeling like I'm a success in podcasting. I don't talk enough about weather. You're a fucking, you're a tropical island. You're beautiful. You're fun. Alone. People love to come on you or come at you. <laughs> A couple months out of the year only. A couple only. months out of the year. <laughs> Once or they, twice a year, Max. And they just can't visit yep, you. Yep, 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 And you change like the microclimates all over. You're mm-hmm. constantly trying to be yeah. a new temperature. Yeah. And you're hard to gauge. Lots of crabs. Crabs. Hard to gauge. Am I? Pretty rocky. How do you think I'm hard to gauge? See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. No, it's not. That, we'll you, be right back after this hard to gauge comment. That was such a bullshit. In here, we pour whiskey. You know what I don't like? Break-ins. And I like the protection of Simply Safe 
uh, at my home because I like it that no one can uh, break into my house. I'm pretty big on Simply Safe. I've spoken about them before. Uh, they got the break-in protection that uh, almost nobody can provide. That home security system that Simply Safe has is incredible. It's not always uh, outside forces that you need Simply Safe's protection from. Uh, this is Joshua's story, huh? He's a Simply Safe customer from Indiana. Indiana, baby. Home of Larry Bird, French Lick. A few months ago, he fell asleep with pizza rolls still in the oven. Been there, done that. Could have been disastrous, thousands of dollars in damages uh, to his kitchen, his home, or worse. Luckily, Joshua has comprehensive Simply Safe system equipped with everything to prevent break ins and smoke detectors to sniff out fires. All right. He uh, awoke to the sound of a 95 decibel alarm for his Simply Safe base station. Seconds later, he got a call from Simply Safe professional monitoring the pizza rolls. Did not make it. R.I.P. Pizza rolls. But Joshua did. He believes Simply Safe probably saved his life that night. Come on, man. I love Simply Safe because I like having monitors on every single uh, part of the home because I want to see what's going on outside of that home. Who's scurrying around? Whether it's a person or a raccoon or a squirrel or my neighbor's cat, Mike. Get your cat out of my yard for the 50th time. Protecting people when their guard down is just one of the reasons that 4 million people use and love Simply Safe, friends. Comprehensive Simply Safe system and 24/7 professional monitoring. You always have someone looking out for you. Plans cost under a dollar a day. That's where they start with no long-term contracts or hidden fees ever. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Once again, simplysafe.com slash whiskey. Can you hear that? No, because Sony makes the best noise-canceling headphones on planet Earth. I used these this weekend on my flight back from Hawaii. It was five hours and 25 minutes, I got to tell you. Not only do these things last the entire time, the sound is incredible. The can noise cancellation is so great because planes are so loud uh, with that white hum and also people chatting around you. Um, the Sony WH-1000 XM5 wireless headphones are so dope. Uh, I've talked about them before, and I got to tell you, I really do love them. They're sleek. They're smooth. They're sexy. The case they come in is really cool. They've got a little pouch for your wires that are inside of it, and they lay pretty flat, which I love. Um, crystal, cle cl crystal clear hands-free calling. They got magnificent sound and it's engineers to perfection. Um, it created the highest end technology in the market for carbon fiber composite material for the casing to their innovative fine sound restore in order to keep raising the bar on what is possible. Um, the, let me tell you something. These things are incredible. They're equipped with four beam forming microphones. Uh, the headphones are calibrated to only pick up your voice. An improved signal to noise ratio enables them to catch every single word, even in a loud environment in the background. You can talk to somebody and it's not gonna hear other people going fart, fart, fart. Your friend can't your friend can't get that through on your call. Okay. But I will say this, these the, these Sony headphones are probably the best I've had in many, many years, and the battery lasted so long. I clicked on the power button and it was like battery still full. And then when I landed in LA, it was like battery still almost full. I was like, all right, Sony. Uh, to purchase a pair of these headphones, uh, click on the link in the description or visit electronics.sony.com slash WH1000XM5. Do yourself a favor. Click on that link in the description below. They are worth it. These headphones are phenomenal. Ginger. I like gingers. You're hard to gauge. Really? Yeah. How so? Like mercurial? You're always, you're always available. I, I need, you're always I need, available. I need feedback like this. You're always available in terms of like you're very giving, you're warm, you're loving. We're friends. Yes. That's how that works. But you're, but no, that's not true. Not all friends are always warm. And some people just know how, some people need the. Well, that's an acquaintance. It's different. Okay. When I, when I. You're hard to gauge in the I'm, sense of, in the sense of, um, I don't know what, what level you're at sometimes. Like. Of. Are you in a, a really good place where you're like excited and, and, and ready and mm -hmm. happy or you're in a place where you're kind of annoyed and frustrated and going through a change because you are a microclimate person who goes through changes a lot interesting how many times have you dyed your hair in the past year yeah but that how many times have you changed a bunch of different things in the past year or so but that was one once i realized the pandemic was gonna last another eight months mm -hmm. i was like we're entertainers let's fucking go for it and you're, be wild but you're but you're you're, yeah, you're the second it was over, we were back and it was like, you know, it's so funny to me because there was so much um like during the pandemic, I was like, I tried edibles for the first time. I got that like long COVID. I was like not brushing my hair. I was like You had a ketamine phase. Yeah, everyone seems to think that. I microdosed ketamine for depression. It's weird. 
Neil Brennan does ketamine, and everyone's like, "That's so cool, man! I do it." And they're like, "We told you she was a drug addict." Yeah, because with I didn't Neil, even do. But Neil I didn't even... seems like he needs to continually try new shit for depression. Mm. You definitely don't need to try. New I shit microdosed. For it's not even full ketamine. I've never done full ketamine except when you go for a surgery, they give it to you. Um, I think. I mean, I'm sure when I got my boobs done, they gave me like propofol, and but I think you get ketamine. How many times did you have your boobs done? It's. I had to get a reconstructive. To... Watch my last special where I talk about it. The answer's there. <laughs> In my special. Would you ever get your butt done? It's called Can I Touch It? You know what? No, because the recovery time is so crazy. I wouldn't rule you it out. You also have, you don't have a bad butt either. I don't, I, people say I have a good butt, but sometimes when you compliment something on something that you're over compliment, you know when you see an ugly baby, that's when you say the baby's the cutest? Yeah. It, I, I have a really hard time with compliments because I feel like so many people over compliment you when they panic. I've almost never complimented you. That's true. Well, when you have it'll it'll be like um angrily. <laughs> like you look good. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm mad at you. Yeah, yeah, kind I'm of. like, oh, your hair is nice. That's when I know I'm Bitch. succeeding in life is when you're mad at me. <laughs> like I can always tell. I I can always tell who's doing well in the business based on who Santina's like, who's the fuck is this guy? That is true. What's I'm his very, fucking I'm very who the fuck is yeah, this yeah. guy? Who the fuck I'm is like, this guy? I'm like they must be doing well. <laughs> but also everyone that I've met that's new lately has been impressing me. There's a lot of people I've seen lately that I'm like but really me, kind of into. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, but really quick, because uh, um, the butt thing. I'm very, like, w not against getting a fake butt, but I don't think the technology's there yet. Um, but No, no, no. They put fat in your they put But your you have own. to take it out of your body. It's a three-month, like, you have to sleep on your stomach for three months. Do you, could you take a cadaver? Could you take cadaver? Uh, <laughs> could you do that? Take cadaver body butt? <laughs> Take a dead guy's like butt. Like literal dead ass? Yeah, put a dead ass, dead I'm, ass. I'm good. The doctor's like, dead I'm ass. I'm not that, I, like, honestly, I am, uh, the, whatever, older I get, the more into my body I am, which is so weird because it's the most trash it's ever been. But I am so, I didn't realize how hot it was to have some physical flaws and be getting older and have a younger guy really be into you. He's, you're saying into the flaws or just you in just general? Just into. But does he ever say, I like this thing and that it's a thing that you hate? Well, I will, my weight fluctuates dramatically. What are you now? 187, 195? <laughs> it's the only way to get a job these days. 194? I'm trying to get number four in a thick, sitcom. Dude. You need to be <laughs> I'm trying to get on the new IT crowd. Thick. And so I, uh, like during the pandemic I, and when I had COVID, I lost a lot of weight. So I will get really, really thin if I don't work out. If I don't have muscles, I'll just like, if I'm just like on the road, yeah. just eating garbage and just on planes all day and not exercising, I'll just like get like mushy thin. And then one time I was trying to put on a pair of uh, shorts and they didn't fit. And I was like, why don't these shorts fit? Like, are they being put in the dryer? And he just looked at me and he went, You've gained 30 pounds. He said that? <laughs> yeah. Love that. <laughs> and I wasn't insulted or any. It was just like, oh, I've gained all this weight. You haven't said it. Like, he, he'll take me anyway. He loves big butts. He doesn't care. He loves small butts. He's just like a, he loves women's bodies. But also, you said something that stood out to me. Are there things about your body when you go, my body's getting shittier, but I love it more? Are there things that you see that you used to think were flaws or annoying or gross, and now you're like, I kind of like that? Great question. Uh, for me, it... I used to be so skinny because I thought that was like the epitome of beauty, which is like mm -hmm. such a backwards thing. And as much as people want to talk shit about Kim Kardashian, we owe all of being able to have butts in any of that shit, I feel like, to her. Like, yeah. she dramatically changed what bodies were about to look like. Yeah, I definitely, I was taught your thighs aren't supposed to touch. Like, Who said that, do you think? Your mom? I, would, I mean, I worked as a, like, model when I was a kid and, like, through my teens. But, yeah, but my my mom was very, very thin and it was always like, your thighs aren't supposed to touch. So who's to blame for this kind of narrative? I th it doesn't matter. Who cares? I mean, is it women and gay men? No, I think. <laughs> is it women and gay men? It's toxic masculinity. Oh, it's got straight yeah. guys. Yeah, it's you and Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> you know we go around saying yeah. stuff. <laughs> Untouch it's, those thighs, you know fatty. What? It's Burt Crusher. <laughs> yeah, he has a, yeah. he has an impossible standard of beauty. Well, but he there, does. That like um. So your mom or women in the industry would say, your thighs aren't supposed to fucking Well, no, touch. I mean, I, I had to, I would go to like fittings, like as a like 12, 13 year old with designers and they would say like, her Ugh. ribs are too big. She can't wear this. Like, and you know. But break I, your fucking ribs. But that right happens to people that are not in that business in any way. So it's something, there were eating disorders in my family, which is a very weird thing. I didn't realize that till I was like in my mid thirties. I was like, oh yeah, like I had family members with eating disorders. Like that's so weird to think about. Because you didn't really realize it when you were a kid? It's just, it doesn't occur to you because it's not a notion you think about. It wouldn't yeah. occur to you that your primary caretaker wouldn't nail it. 
Mm. You know, or would have a problem. Yeah, you're like, that's not real. That's for other people. Well, I, w- I didn't even know to think about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how would you even have put that together? Oh, this person wants to look thin. Like, I didn't even know that what that concept was. So what's the thing about your body that you used to maybe be embarrassed about that now you're into? Um, My thighs maybe touching. That's- scars. I got in a fire when I was a kid. And so I have, like, scars on this right what side. You got in a fire? I st- be a little bit more specific. I caught on fire. You caught on fire? Um, Yeah. I caught on fire, so there was a little bit of a habit of not paying the heating bills in my home growing up, but it wasn't, it was just we struggled with sure. money, and there was a lot of, like, new car, but the bills aren't paid, like, that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and which I think a lot of our parents had an iteration of that. Yeah. And um, uh, I was cold, and I would wear a really long pajamas to bed every night, and I would get dressed on the stove. I would turn the burners up and, like, get dressed on the stove, and I caught on fire. That was right before the Mensa <laughs> Wait diagnosis. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. You I was also diagnosed as autistic, and I beat it. You beat it? I mean, here I am. Congratulations. Looking at you right above your eyes. Yeah, I was going to say, you've been looking this way the whole time. <laughs> I've never seen, you haven't made eye contact here once. Here I am. <laughs> but you lit your, and where's the scar? That? Um, okay, so it starts like here. Whoa. Do you see that? Yeah. It starts like here and goes like And you that. used to be embarrassed about it when you were young. Yeah, I mean, it was. it just was like, I think because the story is embarrassing and like, no, the story's great. Well, it's not. Well, you're not laughing. You're not trying to option it. It's not. Well, it's hard to cool. laugh at a little kid on it's fire. Not, I feel like that's not gonna be a clip. Oh, we're gonna clip it. <laughs> Adult on fire is funnier than kid on fire. It's just. It's just like sad and crazy. So the, anytime you get a tattoo or a scar, you have to be able to tell the story because it's all anyone's gonna ask about. They're gonna see it. And I have yet to have a cool answer to it. So it's like what you don't want. I've learned when you start dating a guy, you never want them to pity you. A lot of girls are into that. It's really unhealthy, but. To be like, here's this scar, and here's this scar. And I don't want that. A guy to feel sorry for me. Right. I don't want you staying for any reason except like you're down. And I don't like that pity trauma bonding shit. Well, but <laughs> I do think it's interesting that the scarring is the first thing you took to outside of like your the thigh thing, I understand. But the scar thing, I don't think anybody even thinks about scars. I've never even noticed. I don't know if my wife has scars at all. Oh, that's I, interesting. I, I've never, th- I don't know, I guess I've never like. I've always put like makeup on my legs when I wear like skirts or I'll just like wear pants. Really? Mm-hmm. I also have like a couple weird moles. I got them removed, but yeah, the things you think matter and like. What about teeth? Your teeth are fine. You never fucked up your teeth, huh? <laughs> I have chips all in my teeth. I love your teeth. They're so I think chip- your teeth are part of your thing. Yeah, because they're all fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And what, what does everyone know what happened to them? Just broke one on a well, vibrator? This is a, this, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, when you put anal beads <laughs> in your ma- mouth and someone's ass and you pull them out, they'll, g- 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 they'll knock knew? all the way Joey out. Who knew Joey Diaz had a cock ring? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Prince Albert cocksucker. <laughs> this, one was, this one was a fight when I when? was in college. Oh, nice. Where, so long ago. Where'd you go to college? Arizona State. Oh, that's right. Um, and then this was in New Orleans uh, uh, three years ago on a crawfish show. I cracked it. I was on uh-huh. mushrooms and we got crawfish and I chipped it. And the best version of the story, I was very embarrassed and sad and upset. And I thought, this is it. Now I have a fucking crack in my front tooth. And we were getting po' boy sandwiches the next morning. And I'm not exaggerating. This is a caricature from a movie. Can I say something really quick? Yeah. This is just an observation. Yeah. That you often say, I'm not exaggerating for real. For and real. I swear to God. I don't mean any of it. I'm just saying, do you think that, because I have this too, when when I'm running late for something mm. um, and there's like crazy traffic, I'll send a photo. Yeah. And someone's like. I believe you. Did we lie? I, I lied a lot as a kid. I yeah. Learned, is this, because I do too. I'm like, true story, swear to God. Well, here's like, why, because on this show, on comedy shows, all we do is make up shit and goof around and fuck off. So I'm like, oh, do people so also think this is made up? this actually happened. Okay. This is a real story. I know when you're telling the truth and when you're not. I'm just curious. They don't. Hmm. They don't. Because when you say this really happened, I'm like, I wouldn't have thought it didn't. But they might not. They might be like, this is bullshit. This is a bullshit story. I don't know. I feel like you're so truthful on your part. So I sucked this guy's cock. <laughs> no, this dude at the store, he literally, in line, he looks at me and I'm playing with my tooth. If you ever chipped a tooth, you play with it a lot. Oh, like with your tongue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't stop. And I play, kept playing with it and I was so nervous about it. And he goes, what's up with your mouth? Because he saw me doing it. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, man. Because I could tell I'm probably going like this. Like in line. You're just pro- looking at people in the eye, just junkie, licking like, your lips. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm fucking tweaking. It was, what's up with your mouth? And I was like, oh, I chipped my tooth on a fucking crawfish shell yesterday. And he goes, that's New Orleans. <laughs> and it was so great. I was like, it is fucking New Yes, thank you. Because I was so self-conscious. I was like, who the fuck does this? And he, d- he assured me, 
this kind of stuff happens. The people that are drunk eating crustaceans It all made day. me feel good. I was yeah. like, this fucking happens. But I have so many flaws about my body, but I've always been cool with them. I don't give a shit. I, when you're born with red hair, you kind of don't give a fuck anymore. That's so fascinating. Because look at how white I am. I'm pale. I was the guy at the beach. I'll show you photos of us in Hawaii. And it's so funny. There was a drone footage of us all in a canoe <laughs> or in a fucking, yeah. And it's comical how white I am. <laughs> like it's genuine. Like the reflection of the water is exactly as clear as the body that I am. And everybody else <laughs> was like perfectly toned, looked either tan or black or beautiful. And there is a white glowing figure <laughs> with orange hair. Casper. Yeah. So I was like, I'm yeah. okay with this. I'm okay with being as weird looking as I am. That's why when I go through phases of being in good shape, happy in bad shape, I don't care. Happy. Fine. Let me ask you a question. I know this is talked about a lot, but um, or, or maybe joked about whatever. How, how traumatic? I, I know that I have a sister who's blonde. Uh, uh, I'm grew up brunette. I I witnessed the dis, there is a wildly different existence if you are blonde girl. There just is. What do you mean? It, not even if you're not like have a stunning face. Being it's just a different people treat you differently people approach you differently uh -huh. it, it's what I mean come on it's like it's a different I guess but if you're a pretty brunette it probably works I've been too many, but you're saying if you're an ugly blonde it's still you still get the points I have been many hair colors yeah, as I know. you may have noticed yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, when I was blonde everyone thought I was a bitch when I had black hair everyone thought I was so nice because wow. of the expectations they had coming towards me and if my personality brunette people are like okay I kind of knew what that was going to be but when I had black hair, people were like, you are so nice. Because they expected me to be a weirdo bitch. Well, how about this? You know when they say the clothes make the person? Who says that? The clothes make the man. The man doesn't make the clothes. Sure. Okay, so sometimes when you put on something, you feel better. Like a guy puts on a suit, I feel like it's distinguished. I'm not. It's bullshit. Okay. So when you change your hair, when you go blonde, do you approach people differently? Do you feel sexier? Well, I think it depends a little bit because we're public people. Then people know us, you know? Right. So for me, it's more like... You know, I, I I love changing my hair color because nobody. It took people a second to recognize me. It was super fun. Were you blonde before you ever had fame? No. Oh fuck! See, see, it's got to be a gauge of knowing what it's like before on the outside. But I, you've seen it. It's like when I go out my, with my blonde girlfriends. It's just a, they just get to the front of the bar fast. It's just a different thing. Why people just assume you're friendly or I don't, I don't know or. You know, and then they look at me and they're like, "Traffic was crazy," and I'm like, "Why is that our small talk?" <laughs> They go up to the blonde girls, I want a shot, and they come to me, and they're just like, Guys, is global warming? Dude, does this feel weird? Like, I'm just like. <laughs> they think you're smart. Yeah, they're like, who's going to win this election? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's Or it's just like, we're less fun, we're duds. It's I, I'm fascinated by, if we're allowed to talk about this stuff, because I know it gets dicey, because when you start making these generalizations, then you touch on human nature, like, being inherently racist. But, like, there are... I'm fascinated by the things we are allowed to talk about that form your personality. Mm -hmm. I think that your astrological sign, it does it does shape you, but not because of the stars and whatever. I think that that your birthday does really matter, not because of the sun and the moon, because of what your birthday's proximity to other holidays were, because that decided how much attention you got on your birthday uh, when you were a kid. this makes sense. And if you were an only child or not, that means That's a lot. huge. Your that name is huge. Yeah, it's huge. Your birth order is huge. But, you know, I was um, born on September 4th, which is always the first day of school. Tells you everything you need to know. Wow. So she's a Virgo. She's a workaholic. She's obsessed with perfection and, and work. It's like, it's not because I'm a Virgo. It's because I was born, I, you On know. First day of school. What yeah. about me? I was born October 16th. What does it say October, for me? Okay, so let me get to it because, uh, for example, like um, January 1st, you're fucked, dude. People are done giving presents. They're done. Yeah. Capricorns, they're all work, you know, studious people that take things very seriously because they didn't get to have parties on. They never, their birthdays were not important. Right. Because no one had any money left. Right. They were secondary. Yeah. After new, the, we, like, we don't, have, you know, you got the re gift bath bomb from Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you ever met someone whose birthday is December 23rd? Dude, so sad. They're uh, the saddest. Saddest. And workaholics have to overcompensate in other ways yep. and get attention other ways. Everyone's like Leos. Uh, they're all like narcissist center of attention. Yeah, because their birthday was in August when everyone was around to have parties and shit right. before you went back to school, you know? So that's like uh, uh, October 13th? 16. 16. A date mm. you should know. It's kind of before Halloween. It's before Halloween. See, this is the thing. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good month. But you also have a very effervescent, outgoing personality. So this is, I think this is the why though. October is a shitty month in Chicago, mm -hmm. which is perfect mm -hmm. for coming over to the house for a party, right? So it gets kind of stormy You'd and shitty. You'd already met a, enough kids at school yep. that you could invite them. It wasn't yep. awkwardly soon. And they didn't have somewhere else to go. It's not like when you have 
summer kids are like, oh, those people, their families are on vacation or yeah. they're gone or they're yeah. traveling. It's the same. It's like the same rhythm for stand-up shows when you're like, man, why are the ticket sales slow in certain cities? You're like, people are out on boats. They're out on fucking boats. They're and they can watch you on the internet whenever they want now. Yeah, that's even harder. Yeah. But also, but I think October was a shitty enough month where it's like, it's not yet Halloween. We're not fucking with the Halloween weekends yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. And so people would come and you could throw a party yeah. and it could be, because in Chicago, you're begging for someone to have a house party during shitty times. And as parents, I'm like, this is a great way to get to know the new kids' parents. Perfect. Like, that's the perfect time a month after school starts. See, we always had good parties. So I was, I, I was lucky with my little... My birthday was lucky. I got lucky where, like, I never felt like I had a birthday where someone was like, man, it was the worst birthday of my life. Everyone I know that was born around that time is awesome. My best friend and ex, Nick, have you met him? Of 20 years. You probably met him at my house with the plaid shirt. He only wears that uh, one plaid shirt. And um, I thought he has two now. He's, (laughs) no, I tried to buy him one and um, he used it as a dog bed. And uh, (laughs) so he's October 11th and then my boyfriend's October 12th. I mean, uh, October people are always, your boyfriend now is October 12th, are always like very well adjusted. So that's a good theory. Are you in love right now with this guy? I, that word is so toxic to me. No, yeah, the answer is, I mean, yes, we say I love you, but I don't love saying that word because I. Because of Disney stuff? No, I just, I, I, it like loses its, va- I, my I whole agree. thing with him, I'm a big, my love language is acts of service and the way I give love is gifts. Um, words of affirmation make me uncomfortable. What do you mean gifts? Um, the way that I give love is gifts. Like I can't sit down and tell you how much you mean to me. Right. Necessarily, or I'm not always going to be, I, I, I can and I will sometimes, but when things get busy, and I did this way before I had any kind of financial solvency too. I would, because this um, is how my, a lot of my family members received love. So it's how I learned to give love. Um, is like, I would rather give you that purse that you, you know, like my showrunner, Emily, like she, she always talked about wanting a Celine purse. She, it's all she ever wanted. It's not what I would want. Right. I don't get it, you know? And um, she loves black and white stripes. Like she's always wearing black and white stripes. I call her Marcel Marceau. She's like, fucking mine. But she's like, she's like, you know, she used to uh, be Lauren Michaels' assistant. You know, she's, she's the greatest and the funniest person. She was my assistant like eight years ago. And um, now she runs my podcast. She's on the podcast. And I just love her so much. Yeah. And I found this Celine bag on eBay that was black and white. And I just was like, I, I know this will make her happier than yeah. anything I could ever say. And I get and it did. And it was like, it's not just like, I'm going to give you something to make you like, it's like really thoughtful. Gift. That is thoughtful. Like, look, I gave you this. That was really nice. I know it's going to get hung up. This we just redid the studio. Deal. This is show the kids at home. Have I ever told you anything sincere? No. And then I just gave you this. This meant a lot to me. It should. No, it did. It's seriously, uh, like, no one ever gives me anything. It was, I really, th- like, found it and got it and made sure it didn't get, like, like that's how I show love for people, which can be confusing to people whose uh, love language is words of affirmation. So my dude always wants to be like, I love you. And I'm like, but, but I'll let you know. Uh, I'll let you know. So he said it first and you didn't say it for a yeah, long time. Yeah, it was time. like a year. My whole thing about love thing is when I said, I don't, the whole are you in love thing, I'm teasing when I say that because also, uh, I don't like it because I think it's been it's been diluted by Disney. I really do blame Disney. I'm dead serious. But if you don't use it a lot, it can be really powerful. Yeah, it's when like, you say it very rarely. Don't say it a lot because then when you do, because I, I mean, I did to it. The per, to the person. Yes. Because the problem Save is I say I love you to you, but I say I love you to my friends uh, because it's the way, of, it's, the, it's how I say, like when I hang up, a lot of times when I hang up with them, I'm, I'm always like, all right, love you. It's me saying, um, I'm, I'm really, th- I'm, I'm really think, <laughs> I'm really thinking about you. Like I, you mean a lot to me, but you can't say you mean a lot to me because it sounds creepy. If I'm like, hey man, you mean a lot to me. Yeah, it it's, sounds it, but weird. But we know what it means. But I can say I love you. The right people like, know what it oh, means. Oh yes, see, but well, because our entire conversation is, hey, what's up, cunt? Fuck you, you cunt piece of shit. Well, All right, love you. Love you, fatty. <laughs> but in relationships, I find it I say it less because I feel like it's. It's been lo- because of the princess and prince idea. I'm dead mm-hmm. serious when I blame Disney because it the does that thing where that it's it like, incurs, yeah. In what? In, and we're so in love, and he rescued me. You know what? I I see this the most, and I'm not trying to be uh, rude or condescending about it. But I watch Love on the Spectrum, which I love that show. But it's interesting how most, if not all, autistic people at that level of the spectrum that they show a lot of them, mm-hmm. they are obsessed with with Disney. Oh yeah, and prince and princesses or those those themes that have been kind of hammered in mm-hmm. it's so interesting and they a lot of them have it even the get even the men that play into the kind of the the role of this man that will save the day and it's permeated culture so much that mm-hmm. it kind of sticks with people because it's very receivable and understandable so when you watch those that show 
so many of them use Disney themes when they mm. talk about love, which I think that is a key indication of how it's ruined what people feel about love. Because I yep. think a lot of people are like, my prince will, someone will save me. And it, that I think is so unhealthy. Can I corroborate that in a way that I hope isn't, um, I don't think my boyfriend would give a shit. I said boyfriend. Please cut that My that. partner. Cut that out. My partner. Ugh, Leave so it in. I hate that. Leave it in. Um, this episode's called My Boyfriend. When I Cummings. like meet a like 35 year old girl who's dating a guy and like, is this is my partner, Joe? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> That's not what we marched for, uh -huh. bitch. That's your boyfriend, How bitch. This is my man. It's my man, bitch. Your partner in what? Right. Did right. you call movers or not? <laughs> what have you partnered with him on that he like needed you to partner it's with? It's also an appropriation. I feel like uh, uh, in the gay community, it's they're okay. allowed to say All partner. Right. Oh, you fine. Okay. No, it no, is. No, it's not. That's their thing. It's okay. This is my partner. Okay, but. Because they couldn't say husband. But you think that that's... That's their word. That's fine. their N-word. Okay, so they have the rainbow too? Well, do you want it? <laughs> well, yes, I need to dye it's, my hair again. It's too many colors. <laughs> you saw me during the pandemic. Would you, have you ever been to the Pride Parade in West Of Hollywood? course, yes. I used to I go when go. I lived there, and then I got go. so sick And of I would it. do Halloween. There. I got so sick of it. Well, I'm though. like a, I mean, I'm a drag queen, so that's my, that's my, that's my <laughs> safe space. You mean we think you're a drag queen? I mean, or that's you where I are? belong. I mean, I'm a trans woman. We know that. Do you think people have mistaken you for that? Uh, you tell me. Yeah, we took a poll. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah, I don't. It was 67% said yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But wait, um, the love thing, that's really interesting. So my dude was raised Jehovah's Witness. So Slow down. Yep. He was raised Jehovah's Witness. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Did he do door to door stuff? Did he have no, to do the mission? No, no. It was very. It was no. sort of more. It was not the no blood transfusion thing. It was a very like diluted version of it. But there was no like parties and TV and movies and stuff. So he didn't watch all that stuff. Whoa! And when he I got none of that. When I tell you that after dinner he puts on gloves and starts washing dishes and puts them in the dishwasher. Why gloves? So I'm like, who's this fucking gay guy in my right? It it doesn't <laughs> occur to you know. And because he didn't get that programming and the, oh. it just he watched his parents not watch that shit and just be in love and support each other as a team. And he does it without expecting anything. I'll come home. He's just like cooking. Like, it's very odd. You're he, saying traditional roles weren't instilled in him. So it's kind of just whatever is or is. Disney roles. Yeah, whatever that well, means. That's what I mean. They, yeah. they did. They did this thing where yeah. it's like. The prince will save the princess and she can live forever in a castle and he goes and Which slays Which is so ironic dragons. because he's an actual Disney character. He's a, a vet of puppies and kittens. He's a hot vet that just saves. He kind of looks like he could have been a Disney guy. He will be like, hey, come outside. And, I'll come, and he'll be like holding a bird. I'm like, where did you, how did you get that to <laughs> get on your finger, man? Like, it's wild. How did he get out of Jehovah's Witness? Well, it's not like, it, it, it it's not something that is um, they don't keep you as structured as it seems. Yeah. Like I think it's if you believe it, you're kind of a part of it, but you can sort of go in and out. Oh, you're allowed to come and go. Yeah, I think parents like if you sort of grow up and you just get to move through it once you're out of your parents' house. If it's something that you're not there's there's you know look I, I'm very pro some cults and I'm very pro some religions because I mean imagine what this city would look like if all the people that thought Scientology was a good enough idea to become one were loose in the streets. We're running wild. Yeah, You, you don't want those people, the people susceptible to that, please lock them up in a castle and keep them in there. I'm a Scientologist. You know what? I know you're not because you have to ask them <laughs> directly. Do you really? No, you're not allowed to offer up that you're one. I have to say, are but you But I'm friends with some. How about that? Yeah. I bet you you're friends with some. I, Elizabeth Moss is my best friend. <laughs> no. I wish. Out of here. I am though. Who tell me? Do, uh, do we? I'm they, not going to spill. Okay, their beans. yeah, I know a couple too, but I think that the ones that you're really friends with, you can't be too tight with someone who's too hardcore in it. You're probably right. Yeah, we're, you can't, there's we're, a whole, we're very surface because you're still yeah. you're a suppressive person. Ah, uh, they can maintain relations with you, but they can't truly see you, you as anything. They, do you think they get off on that? They where think like, you're like beneath them. Oh, that's hot. But I'm just saying, like you know, those friends that you feel like you kind of like, yeah, I guess I'll have coffee. That's how they feel with you. Like, You're, I'm being of service to this person until I can recruit them to Scientology. If you, they're hardcore. Do you do that to me? What do you mean? Are you my Scientologist? No, I'm fucking your friend. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny to think that they think they're better than you because I do know that this person I'm thinking of does is pro but he, But this person is better than me. 
Yeah, but I'm just saying. So it's a coincidence that also his religion is like, you are better than that I guy. am fascinated by a lot of what Scientology says makes a lot of sense, which is why it's so successful. Yeah. It like makes sense. Any cult is successful or religion if they are able to give you the notion that you're in control of your life. Right. That is the anesthesia we're all looking for. Yeah. And the people that have, I mean, look, Scientology, great. Re if you want to get someone sober, that is the fucking place to send them. Like it, it does some incredible things for people that can't exist in the world otherwise. Mm. Gives them jobs, whatever. I mean, I think it also like leaves babies to be eaten by fruit, fruit flies and shit. Like that's not great, but um, I don't know enough about it. But there's a lot of it that makes sense. It's like write thank you notes. You know, write down all the mistakes you've made. Write down your goals, and mm. then it's like, don't give a kid with seizure seizure medication. You're like, wait, how do we go from? <laughs> You gotta this, let them figure it out. Yeah, so it like, but, and of course what they do is what is, um, I don't know if it's directly taken from 12-step programs, but the step where, you know, fourth step where you sort of say all the things you're ashamed of. Yeah. And you write them down and then you read them to your sponsor and then you burn it up. It's kind of the idea to like expunge it so that you don't feel shame. And so I say to you, hey, one time I killed a frog when I was six and I think, or something crazy. Uh, someone said that to me once when they were reading their step work to me. And Jesus. I was like, I, it was like, I literally, everything was like, I did this drug, I stole this car. And then it was like, I stepped on a frog and watched it die. And I was like, I am calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, remember uh, making of a murderer when no one could figure out if he killed the girl? And then he wrote about how he threw a cat in the fire. Yes. Episode four. I was like, we're done here, yeah, dude. We know what happened. That's it. Anybody that hurts animals, it's a dead giveaway. It's a psychopath, yeah. It's a dead As giveaway. As a kid, to do it like for fun, just to see. Even though I did. Um, although, although. Fireflies. Fireflies? Did you have fireflies oh, as a yes. kid? yes. Okay, so it is fun to smear the glow on I you. I know. Why would you be so pretty? Well, because we have to take it, and it's glowy, and we would put I it know. on our faces as kids, and it was fun. And we we did. By the way, that's on our parents. That's not on us. Thank you. That's on our parents. Because I never really heard a real animal, but I do remember. Because we wouldn't know otherwise. We would always uh, take those things and put the glow on us at night and glow our hands and stuff. I did go home to my um, dude's uh family and um his mom told me a story where i was like when did you know he was gonna be a vet and he went or uh, she went um oh one day uh he brought a lizard in that he had cut open and i said why'd you do that and he said i just wanted to see what was inside <laughs> in that moment you have to become a vet yeah otherwise you're a murderer yeah you have it's to vet just, or kill if you've done that just become a vet that's your only cover i thought you were gonna say he was trying to health like help it like it was sick or something mm -mm. he just wanted to slice that bitch up i just want to see what was inside he might be borderline though Mm. He might be doing the vet thing just so he can like secretly kill animals. No, he's like, this I, one didn't I, make it. I've mostly dated and been raised by borderlines. Unfortunately, he's not one. It's so boring. He's boring line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's why I'm like snorting the fucking Amber Heard trial. What does well, he what does he have that's um He's so he's, he has no bad his no job, bad habits, his no job. naughty. So nasty. he was so he started working in his dad's veterinary practice in Arizona uh, when he was like five. So he was putting dead dogs in the freezer when he was five, you know, oh, and know. we're like actually working, which I think that hot take we should bring back child labor. <laughs> he has so much integrity. He, it takes so much for him to get overwhelmed. He because he works in an ER. He sees people at their worst all day, and it's his job to diffuse the situation. It's his job to calm them down. You yeah. know, it is his job to like all day. People are coming in with their my dog is dying, my dog just got hit. But like he and he sees the worst of people because he sees dogs that have acid has been thrown on them by mm. a gangs and or dogs that are dying. These acid throwing gangs got to cut it or out. Or just like half the people. And then he also has to ascertain when people are lying because people come in and they're like, uh, "What's going on with your dog?" I'm like, "I don't know. He must have." Ate something weird, and they're like, okay, well, I just found cocaine in the system. So is there anything else I need to know? That's and they're like, where the cocaine is. Do you know what I'm saying? So people lie to him all day because they don't want to admit they left out their pot brownies or uh. something that killed their dog or whatever. He's like, I'm not judging you. I just need you to tell me the truth. Like, he's able to, in a way that I don't think I am up at a place yet where two things can be true at once. And that's really hard for me. I need to uh. black and white thinking is kind of my safe place, this guy's an asshole, or this guy's the best. There's no, like, sometimes he's a dick and sometimes he's not, and that's just how it goes, and I can't control that. Like, just the idea of, you know, I was just driving here, and it, it takes a lot for me to get pissed in traffic, but when you're low on gas, you realize, when you have to get to a gas station, like, in a half a mile, how <laughs> retarded everybody is. <laughs> it is true. I mean, I'm normally, like, chilling. I've got my podcast on, whatever. I'm listening to Whiskey Ginger, you know, listen, being thanked as a fan, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I, I kind of like. I've never seen him lose his temper. I've never seen him yell. At, he's just the calmest, most in control person. He's got to have a switch. Something has to flip. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what it was. 
You put something in his butt. You tell, <laughs> no, I can't, it's so funny. We joke about that because he's so much younger. I'm like, do I have to eat your butt? Do I have He's a rock climber, so his butt is so, so tight. I can't even. You can't get in. Thank God. It's like you I can't... noticed when I when I hugged him last time. I put my hands down his ass, it's... and I thought, "What a tight! What an unbelievably tight it ass!" It is hilarious. When he sits, he's like sits up a little bit higher. It's such a nice bubble butt. He's got a total bubble butt, and what it's is... funny because it comes out so like but far beneath. Like it's it. it There's a crest. He's got a nice crest. It starts low too. Oh it's yeah, like a little dump truck. It looks like a like a full diaper, like a baby's diaper. <laughs> Okay, so tell me what you would do in this situation. So, um, I he's studying for a big exam. He's a criticalist, which means it's which are very hard. Very few people pass this exam. I don't even know what that is. It is it's kind of a new profession because there's new technology, obviously. Yeah. Um, where if your dog is like dying, has sepsis, needs uh, dialysis, mm -hmm. is at the worst of the worst, and we don't know what to do, and it's going to die, you take it to him basically. Uh. So my dog was dying. No one could figure it out. They thought it was cancer. They thought it was. He, he gets to it and he goes, this is an autoimmune thing. We tap his joints. Here's what you do. Like, he's just like doggy hauser. He's like this. I know. <laughs> Don't. Su I know. <laughs> Please. He's like super whiz kid, whatever. Um, and um, and so he's studying for the boards. The last time he was studying for the boards, it got canceled by COVID. But I guess I was behaving in a way that was not conducive to him studying eight hours a day, whatever. So we got, we kind of like broke up last time he took boards. It's. I guess for a doctor, the most stressful time. Yeah. It's like us, it's like three months before we're gonna shoot a, well, this conversation didn't go well. And I was like, yeah, it's like me shooting a special. Like and, it's and this, he's like, it's nothing it's like that. same thing. You no. study for eight hours a day, like learning words. He's like, that, you talk about your tits, I'm saving lives. I know, <laughs> no, literally it's like he's memorizing equations and words that have like four Zs in them. It looks like German, like I don't even, and a lot of the stuff that he's memorizing isn't even true anymore. It's just for the, the boards. Like you have to study a bunch of shit that is um, obsolete. Because they have an updated. But you need to know it historically. You have to be board certified, wow. basically. You're like a different level if you're board certified. So he's doing his board certification. He has to study for the, the note cards, the thing. I mean, people are sending him flowers, like other vets. Like it's a big deal when yeah. you do that. They're sending him wine and food. Like people are calling, stopping by, like to offer to help. I'm like, and um, I'm like, it's fine. What do you mean? Like, I'm good. Like, I'm totally like, I gave him an edible all at two. He's good. Like, I'm just totally the first one. The first one was just tricky because I guess, I don't remember why, I don't remember. Um, I think I just didn't want anything serious and I sort of broke it off and it was a distraction to him, but it was canceled by COVID anyway. So then he's studying his boards. I'm like, I'm gonna take this really seriously. I give him a room in the house. I get him a standing desk with a little remote. I'm really trying to be supportive and right. not a, like, this is his moment. Um, I, <laughs> I, I get him like, I put a bed in there. Like he's only where he's studying. I'm scheduling podcasts around it. Like I'm, I'm really doing what I, I'm, I'm trying very hard to love this person. Yeah. And then, um, so we talked about freezing embryos. Uh, I frozen eggs. We were talking about freezing embryos last Christmas. Cause it's like, you have to inject yourself every day. You have to go to the doctor yeah. every other day. It's just like, like a hassle. Yeah. And it's like, all right, let's knock some embryos out so we don't have to think about this, you know? And we have, that buys us another three, four years. I don't want him to feel pressure. I don't want to feel pressure because I don't feel ready yet, whatever. And uh, I mean, I get all the time in the world. You <laughs> like, do. Look at me. No, I, I mean, truly, if we do do that, it gives then us you like- Then you really do. It gives us like five years. We can yes. Put and he's younger and I don't want him to feel rushed and whatever. What and, is he, how, 16 or 17? He's- <laughs> This is last year in high school? He's, um, and so, uh, so the guy, the, the embryo guy, is gonna talk, the, he's like a very big uh, fertility doctor in LA, which is only in LA, is there like a celebrity fertility doctor who has like very tricky windows of time. I convince him to talk to me from seven to eight, Alex is done every day at 6.30, from seven to eight over Zoom on like a Wednesday night. Sure. So every day, like clockwork, he's done at six o'clock. Like it's a very rigid schedule. So it's seven o'clock. He's been like in the gym for a minute. Like he lifts like things with his fingers, like fucking weights with his fingers and shit. Cause he's rock climbing. So he's lifting weights with his oh, fingers. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, that's like a, you know, I'm like, hey, I have a Zoom call with Andy Wong at seven in like 30 minutes or whatever. Do you want to hop on? You know? And I'm like, you know, it probably was more like 10 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to be honest. Cause I went and like I sat down. I'm like, do you want to come? Just like ask him some questions or like whatever. And he comes, sits through the whole meeting. He tells us, here's what, you know, you gotta come jerk up in a cup on Friday, blah, blah, whatever. And I'm like, do you guys have enough pictures of me on the walls to make sure he's gonna be able to finish? And um, call goes great. Yeah. Goes great. I'm like, cool, we're gonna, we have all the time in the world. Look at us being so close. Close the computer, what the fuck was that? I'm lost. 
a lot of people are not. They're like, that was unfair that you did not give him a heads up. You uh-huh. should have given, told him like when you scheduled it. And I'm like, well, I was like, if you want to hop on, great. If you don't, don't. But you don't have to hop on if you don't want to. But I guess I wasn't really giving him the option for real because it was. I'm on your side. He, he, for me, I'm like, what do you mean? You don't have to if you don't. Well, just say no. Yeah, that's fine. But if you're a guy in his position, are you the asshole who said, no, I don't want to, you know, jerk off on your dusty eggs? Well, I'm just going to jerk off. (laughs) No, but it was like he was in a studying focus mode and I ambushed him with something. But it's not like he had to jerk off right then. I think it was if just. If it was like, hey, jerk off in this cup. We have like 15 minutes. Then I'd be like, lady, give me some heads up. Something that serious. The, the talk about it? If the your prep? girl was just like, hey, let's, uh, I have the, the, you know, the fertility guy on, and you're about to head to the comedy store, it's like. Well, I would just go, well, can I, can it wait? And she's like, no, he's on now. And I'll go, all right, I'll, okay. Yeah, and then just be resentful later. Yeah, or, like a, you know, an, an adult. And just drink be, whiskey like a man. And just be mad at yeah, you through this bottle. Totally. Yes. So I just, I don't know, but that that was the the most upset I've seen him. That's the most upset? Mm-hmm. Where he was like, this was unfair. Yes. Well, it was just like a, it was something where I was like, I am so confused about what I did wrong because I genuinely was trying, I was trying so hard to support your schedule and I scheduled this around you to accommodate you, but there's something wrong with my boundaries or my judgment that I am so off. Yeah, no, it's because your your personality is very much like you're get up and go and get it done and do it. I'm I'm the same way. I'm like, just do it. Just, it's fine. Just do it. And it's not that big of a deal. And you can always say no, but I think not everyone No, you're right. Most, they can I think say most no. people feel too vulnerable to say no because they're like, well, that's, I feel, um, they're, they're like, you put me in a position where I had to say yes. That's, I think, maybe it. Because what, what does he do? Keep lifting rock weights with his fingers? And that go, w- but he needed that, though. That you know was important yeah. <laughs> This I'm is just, important. It, and this also can help you, by the it way. It is putting in it. Well, no, he's a rock climber, and they have to keep their fingers dry at all times. He can never finger you? They have to. They put um, dry stuff on their hands every night to keep it dry. What about his toes? When he swims, he puts his uh Can he get good with up. his toes? I'm good. You don't want to get towed? <laughs> You've never gotten towed before, I've never, dog? No. Get towed. I've never gotten towed. I feel like comedians, we spend 80% of our time talking about foot fetishes, and they must just not be as real as we No, think. no, people love them. Oh, my God, really? are you kidding me? Google Pornhub foot fetish. It's really? like 9 million hits. Do we know yet what it's from? Like, I got to be honest with you. I love feet. But what? But do you fuck them? No, I don't, but I don't want to. I just That's maybe germaphobic. I don't want to put my well, cock on feet. you know they fuck through it here. Yeah, I know, you but it just, I don't like want to do that. I'd rather, because yeah, yeah. there's so many other things to fuck. There's so many holes. There's so many holes. And but I get the idea when I do see a solo video, I do get when they put their feet up or a foot sneaks in there, it is it like turns me on more. Like do if I'm think- watching a solo masturbation video and if and her foot her leg goes up and a foot is in there, I'm like, why is that so much hotter? Yeah, but if there wasn't a pussy with a finger in it, it wouldn't. I know, but I'm saying it just heightens it, right? Okay. If she just kept going, I'd just be as turned on as I am. But then when I see a foot, I go, ooh. Is it because? It, but it has to be a well manicured, like dainty foot. Not they no. I no. It just has to look like a. It has to look like a nice foot. Yeah, it's clean. It's put. It, then the nails are painted. The I like the painted nails. Theories uh, I have heard from uh, uh, psychiatrists are number one something called cathexis, which is when a baby crawled on the floor. Oh, it looks at feet all the time. It would see its mother's feet, and its dick was r- rubbing against the carpet basically like because they could really only crawl after their mom's feet so if your mom was barefoot a lot oh. that could be part of it oh shit and well the other one is actually Sigmund Freud who is uh, the, <laughs> more accurate every day um, was that toes look like dicks which is just a little no like baby dicks baby dicks babies like pedophiles no. I don't like that no for me it might be the mom thing. like you see your mom I, I understand that because I think about that sometimes when I see my dog <laughs> when my dog sleeps under the chair I, I, one time I was stoned and I got down and I was petting her mm-hmm. and I would, and I realized I was there for like a half an hour. Cause mm-hmm. I was just thinking about her vantage point. And, and as my wife was walking by and stuff and I was like, this is what everything looks like to her. Like everything looks like this. She only sees this high up until she looks up, which she rarely does. As you know, most dogs aren't always like doing this. They're kind of looking forward and around. So I was laying on the floor high, looking at her vantage point. I was looking at all the dust and dirty shit underneath the TV stand. And I was like, she sees this all the time. Like, it, it was so interesting to think, and I just tied it in mentally with what you just said, of like, oh, yeah, when you're a little fucking baby, you must just always see those things, and they must connect with you in some weird way, that you're sounds, low to the earth. Sounds like some good weed you're smoking. <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm so high right now. What's the perfect, as adults that have 
busy lives, what is the appropriate amount of and weed? best use of weed, alcohol? We're out of the pandemic. Sleep how about, party's how about over. Uh, okay. A sub 30, if you're under 30. Okay. It's kind of a free for all. And I mean, I genuinely mean that. But I wonder if they should do it the other way. I think when I was in my 20s, I did not one drug, nothing. I worked my ass off. Yeah. Did not, I literally had my first glass of wine like when I was like 33. And I was like, oh, this is a kind of fun thing to do. Like, but I'm saying, I, I don't know who said this to me one time, but some, like my dad's, one of his good friends, it was like, you can eat and drink whatever you want. It won't catch up to you till pa way past 30. And I thought, well, really, mm -hmm. like, you can basically do almost anything to your body until 30. And I thought, no, nah, I don't know if that's true. Now I look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I could but eat I, and drink and smoke and do drugs and do anything and still function. But, we, but I don't know if we know what kind of damage we're doing. Like you can. Oh, but who cares? I you can white knuckle through it. But I, I, I mean, I think about the number of, like drinking. It's like you're not getting REM sleep. Like you're not getting the Delta sleep that's actually yeah. restoring your body. You're actually just like in a like a coma state, basically. So you're not. You're doing some kind of damage to your brain. Well, I'm not saying f fucking drown in drugs yeah, yeah, and alcohol, yeah. but I'm just saying like you can kind of use them as sparingly as you need mm -hmm. or or not until you're around 30. Post 30, I think you have to like have a full meal, mm -hmm. <laughs> have a full day, go to like at least work out or exercise or something. Then you can have a glass of wine. Then you can smoke a joint. You know what I think it is? You need like the balance. Back when you're a kid, you don't need to fucking balance. You need to go nuts. And not wanting to talk about the her depth trial, I feel like I've talked about it so much. Give it to me. I've, no, it's more that watching that relationship reminded me you can stay in a bad relationship, a bad job, a bad situation so much longer if you're drinking. Oh yeah. It's more that. You you like just watch out if you're wasting your life with with you're in a relationship with someone and you're always stoned and you're always high. Like you can stay in that relationship forever because it's it's not, right. you know what I mean, real. And right. then all of a sudden you've been with someone for three years and you're like, we're kind, you know those couples where they're kind of just drunks together or they're kind of just like both smoke weed, they have nothing, whatever. Yeah. It's just like something that uh, um, makes a bad situation tolerable for longer. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, and also their habits support each it's other. It's like a sneaky side effect that has nothing to do with your physical health. You're just right. wasting time. So then what, is, I don't know. So then what is it? I always say like with weed with me, it's a reward anymore. I was a pothead when I was young. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, I started smoking at 15 years old and I smoked I for like that. 20 years. Your yeah. brain is so fast. That's shocking. I know, but I just don't think, I don't know if it has as much of an effect on that as people think it does. Some people, I do think it it slows them down. Some people, I think it doesn't do anything to them at all. Interesting. It also, I uh, heard a great, Hugh Downs, you know who Hugh Downs is? No. The journalist Hugh Downs? No. He had a great quote. He said, um, uh, people are always worried about killing brain cells with alcohol and, mm -hmm. and drug use. Mm -hmm. But if they're, they're, if they're dying that fast, they're to be killed anyway. Your brain cells die anyway, so you might as well get rid of the bad ones. So kids out there, smoke that weed, drink that booze, get rid of the bad uh, brain cells. New ones are replenishing themselves every single day. Are you sure his Look name is not Hugh Down Syndrome? That's it. Hugh Down Syndrome. <laughs> it was a hyphenated last name. <laughs> He's like, no one needs brain cells. Let you just me, need tons of chromosome. Let me go back to something that you mentioned before I let you go because I do want you out of this studio. You were pro-child labor. And I don't know if you're throwing it away as a joke, but I got to tell you something. I'm definitely pro child labor. I, I don't mean in a factory with sharp objects. I mean like oh, chores. Fuck. I did. I mean chores. I mean newspaper routes. Jobs. Jo actual jobs. You know, manual labor. Just something besides what I'm seeing right now. With what kids. are some adult jobs that we could actually entrust yeah, to yeah, kids yeah. that would be fun? Um, bartending. So funny. So funny. They'd be great at it. Be funny. They'd love it. They'd love it. Um. Uh, uh, we talked about this earlier. Making rugs. Okay, that sounds factory. It's basically, See, braiding. That sounds, that oh no, home it like authentic rugs. What do you mean? Not like cost plus world market. I mean like from the farmers market. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like cute rugs. Okay, you know. I do think we should have flight attendants be little kids. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It'd black be girls. so funny. Little black little girls. girls. <laughs> <laughs> Little black girls only as flight attendants. So fucking funny. Podcasters. <laughs> podcasters. Little kid podcasters. Um, uh, they would do the same thing we do. Uh, we are little What does kids. that mean? What's that? Um... Like making little murals, like yeah, this. Putting, more putting, art. Sh more art should be made by kids. Small, tiny things put in a tiny thing. Okay. Sex. Porn. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Is there any really big job? No, this is real. This is actually serious. I mean, let's 
there's uh, not it, the sex. Porn I know part. I will have a kid at some point, and I know that all my friends are going to like call child services on me because I will. They will be shoveling shit. They will be doing all sorts of manual labor. I worked on a farm. I worked on my aunt's farm. I had to shovel shit. I had to clean out the horse's feet. It it's it's so important. It humbles you too. Also, team sports. Got to do team the sports. People that didn't play team, like I'm working on this bit. I, it's gonna bomb right now, but I'm because I'm so it's such a seed about the trans athletes of like the um the big focus I guess was uh, we'll preface it with the fact that you hate trans people and that's Whitney <laughs> Cummings hates trans people. I do want to put that out there. It's the only thing that gets anyone to watch a special these days. So if I have to say that to get you to watch my special, I absolutely everybody's will. Everybody's shooting that trans gun. I mean, it's everyone's I, like, is this for me? Should I take it? <laughs> but um. Is that it, the most? Most of the focus was on the runners, like the sprinters. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I'm already not in. I'm not on the sprinter side because if you've chosen to be a sprint, first of all, a lot of those the trans the case was very tricky because the trans runners that were beating the biological females they were both black, so it was hard to tell why they were winning. They were only beating, were they beating whites? Only white biological girls. Wow, well, this is already unfair to start. So I'm just saying, no, <laughs> it's hard to. <laughs> <laughs> like none of there were no <gasps> black biological females in the race. You know it wasn't I mean? apples to apples. I feel like that place was already racist because they didn't have any black. If you want your team to, I, yeah. they didn't. Have, why do you only have white female sprinters? Put up some school? black people. It's man. just it just was already weird to me. Yeah. Okay. And if you're a sprinter, I'm just like you're not a team player. You're the person that signed up to drive four hours to run thirty feet. Alone. It's all about me. It's weird. There is no team. There's involved. no. There's no. Group of people that's no. you're the only company you want to keep for four years in your sport. We were just talking about somebody like this before the show. It's so weird <laughs> to me that you just want to like. It's me. Just you. But don't they also do other events usually? Well, they they run and jump and throw a shot put. It's all alone. None of it is team. No, you, no relay. The, well, the relay you hate your relay. Come fucking come on! You're ruining. Hurry it. up! I mean, I, have you done relay races? So yes. you hate it's your teammates. Nightmare. Yeah, it's a nightmare. You hate your teammates, yeah. and you can never get it in their hand right, and they fucking drop it. It's I don't think you become a runner because you're like cool with other people. So you think the biggest downfall to the trans athlete thing was that it's not, it's not fair to start with. I just well, no, I just feel like sprinter. Also, what are they ruining your? sprinting career like it's such a <laughs> nothing nowhere sport <laughs> like are these trans taking a, away your sprinter. Yeah, I fine but like to, wh like what's the best case best case scenario you become a famous runner and then transition like Bruce <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is is there okay there got, it, is. got it got it got it we got uh, it the only famous sprinter there. Ended up transitioning later. Yeah. So either way, you're you going to be- You want it now or later. Yeah, it's going to happen. Either way, you're going to be bummed about your kids. If you're a sprinter, you're going to be trans, whether okay, you like it or not. Okay, you're either going to compete okay, against them or you're going to become one later in I'm life. I'm saying solo sport. It's only- The, the biggest qualms have been in, in swimming and in sprinting, which are the two sports where you're like, I just want to be me under the water alone. There was a boxer. There was MMA. <sighs> yeah. That one's fucking crazy. I would Have buy tickets seen? to see that. The fight was great. Was it? Yeah, I mean, I saw there's some stuff online you can watch. I thought Joe. I thought they weren't allowed to do that. Joe's not trans. I Joe? no. I just remember Joe saying, that, "Wasn't there some kind of thing where you not in, not in not in UFC? A, a, a trans woman fought a biological woman. No. Yeah, a I trans. Because that's Joe's main. Argument, I think, Rogan. No, they did have they did have oh, a trans woman it. fight a biological, biological woman. Oh, yes, wow. yes, yes, intense. yes, yes, yes. And they also, I just watched on a not a UFC. This is like these third market. You know what I mean? There's other leagues or whatever. There's one in Apple. I just watched one That's where there's amazing. a fucking woman who fights a man square uh, square up straight up. Biological woman fights a biological man. It was great. The Johnny Depp her trial. Guess who won? Um. Okay. Okay. Last thing before we wrap up. Before that, I mean, we can't. What end is on this that. cougar rant on your neck? Oh, this is a necklace that was given. Is to it me. real gold? May, my, I mean, I don't, I don't know. My guy gave it to me. Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. What you don't like it? No, I do like it. I'm just obsessed with gold now because I feel like crypto is going to collapse. I think the money market's going to blow up, and I'm like, man, I should have more gold. Did you buy crypto? No. Good. Uh, I did. Why does no one listen to me? Have I ever been really wrong when you've called me about something? No, honestly, no. But I did, but I I didn't put in a lot of money. I bought, I bought, my buddy got me into the thing and I bought a little bit. I'm very pro new, like, uh, uh, cause I, I, I'm very pro crypto and decentralized mon currency cause that means the mafia can come back. I'm not even joking. I know. They can. I know. Dude, homelessness, that's, that's their thing. That's Trash. Their thing. 
homeless. Like, that's what they handle. They clean up the streets. They do. So mafia, because, you know, of, you know, things getting so computerized and whatever, you can't, yep. you know, move in silence like lasagna. So now that crypto is back, Jeez, the mafia silence. will. Oh, what, did I, what did I say wrong? You just said move in silence like lasagna, which doesn't make any sense. Oh, like the like the what is it, real G's like move in jizz, silence like lasagna. <laughs> Fuck me. So I basically just said lasagna is quiet. It is very quiet. Um, but uh, now I'm very fascinated to see what will happen with the mafia resurgence if now you can uh, have no tracking on your. On your on your money. What's that called? I'm not I'm not thinking of the word. What do you mean on your finances? What's it called? It's not traceable. Oh uh, yeah, non traceable. Yeah, it, dude. Can I tell you? Do you remember the homeless problem in LA? Everyone's talking about. Yeah. One day, overnight, gone. Not in Venice, but at where I live. Don't say where I live. And in all of right the exits, here. one day, gone overnight. Like Mafia? not a, not one backpack, not one sleeping bag, gone. Huh. Four weeks later, there's robberies all around LA. I had someone case my house. Apparently the Chilean mafia picked up all the homeless people, took them to Tommy Bahama, cleaned them up a little bit, gave them all fucking bikes, no joke, and uh, people were getting robbed in Brentwood and all sorts of shit. Really? Chile mafia will put you to work. That's what they handle. They handle sanitation, construction, homelessness, all that. I mean, I mean, they were the second government for immigrants. Well, I know that we was... do need them back. I do. We do need the mafia. I think back. there's a version of the mafia that is not as savage as it was. Like, like the new, I don't know. Imagine the new kings of mafia who are like, we're going to do this right, and like fill in where the government fails. Yeah, but I think they'll be way more brutal in this day and age. C totally. But I mean, the mafia. Like, I'm not to be. These are some hot takes today, but to be pro mafia, like, I mean, their main thing in New York in like what 70s, 80s was like, we're going to fill in where the police won't like we're gonna go yeah, protect the city in the subway and yeah. shit like that and then i mean you only do sanitation and concrete and construction if you want to hide bodies which is fine fine right fine. and they, they go handled somewhere. sanitation and say what you want about mafia men but they are respectful to women you, they are respectful to women and they take out the trash except for the guys they hire in construction they're disrespectful to women but they the, their bosses are not disrespectful hey baby it's helpful <laughs> it's i need thank you i was the bitch that was like thank you i needed that today <laughs> I act, I really appreciate it. So that. what have we learned today? Whitney, Whitney. I can't uh, believe you think I'm Whitney's, material. Whitney's hard. Don't take that. Don't take that that serious. It was me trying to make a microclimate comparison. It didn't really work. Whitney is. It's okay. I think we got a clip out of it. Whitney's not in love with her partner. <laughs> um, She does love him very much. Number uh, one favorite whiskey. Uh, Gun to your head. Number one favorite whiskey of Gun all your head. time. Now go. Gun. Uh, You're dead. Uh, uh, You're dying. Um, it's, I missed. Like, thankfully, I missed your head. Well, then you killed me because I, I don't know. My of all time is now, insane. You have to choose. Well, there's a whiskey on the show. I can't do that with this oh. thing on the fucking well, no. show. No, I mean Bushmills can be one of your favorites. What's just, my favorite whiskey? Of, you in you the must know. I mean, my dude's a big whiskey guy, and he's he's very serious about it. I would, I would tell you the holy grail for a lot of people is in the Pappy Van Winkle world. Do you okay. know what that is? A lot of people think Pappy is like the. One okay. of those things because it's hard to get your hands on. Uh -huh. But honestly, I, this sounds like a corny, cheap answer, and it's not because of this is on the show. Seriously, I I, I like different kinds of whiskey for very different reasons. That's, okay, so that 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 is someone that is not a connoisseur of whiskey. I am very interested in. Th I, this is what I hear from whiskey people: is yeah. you want this bourbon if it's this kind of yeah, night. Sometimes I like a rye. Sometimes I want a bourbon. Sometimes I like. When sometimes... do you want a rye? I truly want to learn about this. I'd rather have a rye if I'm gonna. Like, if I'm really going to throw a little splash of ginger in it or something else, I'd rather have a, a rye. Okay. Yeah, for sure. If I want, like, you know, a really, really good bourbon to sip on, I, then I really want just a little, one piece Jacob's of ice. Creek. Jacob's Creek? I'm joking. Rowan's Creek? That's Jacob's one. Jacob's Creek. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a thing that I'm like, she's not listening to any I of this I am stuff. because I need to learn this. I bought him the well, Jap- Well, I'm going to buy you- I'm, you He know loves what? Japanese whiskey. And that's- Nikka? It's beautiful. It's got like ridges in the, and then my new thing is whenever I go to a cool hotel, like Hotel Emma in San Jose or mm. in um, uh, uh, San Antonio or um, uh, San Jose, Hotel San Jose in Austin, like cool hotels, they'll yeah. have like little bespoke, cool local whiskeys and I'll bring them back. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you a list of stuff that you should get him then. I got him like a sampler from this place in Nashville that um, like lost his mind. What was it called? Do you remember? I'll, I'm going to send you pictures. It doesn't matter. I should have. Put kids back to labor, and we want little flight attendants uh, and um, little podcasters. Little black flight attendants. Little black flight attendants, <laughs> which is the name of this episode. And be sure, we did put a Whitney's address up at the, up at the beginning. Be sure to go say hello to her. 
<laughs> what look am the, I going to get canceled look for? Look in that camera right now. What am I going to get canceled for? Just and you say one word or one phrase to end the episode. We end this the same way as you know. It's embedded in history for the rest of time. So look in this camera and make have sure I you ever say. Have done that before? Yeah, you did. What was my last one? Uh, um, I think you said something like the Jews did this. I think that's what it was. <laughs> but what it's Made one word famous, or one of. phrase, and that is going to end it forever. And they'll be embedded in history in a vault of last phrases on whiskey ginger. When you're ready, look Are at the camera. Are you doing camera. like a sizzle reel of them all? I don't need to fucking tell you what my what I'm trying to do. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, look in the camera. What did I say last time? Do you remember? Um, no, it was something about the episode. It was something. That, it was deep inside the episode. Someone. This is my third episode. Of, on I here, know, I and think. people remember, but I don't know. I can't. I'm bad at that. Um, Be serious. Can't wait for you guys to tell me how old I look on Reddit. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.